Live coverage of the North Dakota High School Dakota Bowl Football Championships on the North Dakota NBC Network is brought to you by Farmers Union Insurance, North Dakota State Seed Department, American Bank Center, and NODAC Mutual Insurance. live at the Fargo Dome where today four state football championships will be won. It's a Friday football festival. Good morning everyone and welcome to NBC North Dakota sports coverage of the 2011 Dakota Bowl. Along with Lee Timmerman, I'm Dan Hammer and welcome to this complete wall-to-wall -wall coverage of North Dakota's celebration of state football championships on this Veterans Day. Our first game will be the nine-man championship with the Napo uh, Napoleon Gackle Streeter taking on North Star, and uh, everyone go was talking about, wow, you guys got to play at nine in the morning. Kelly McCleary, the Imperials head coach, said, well, that certainly is a good thing to complain about. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't trade it for anything. No. The Class A championship at around noon today, Linton HMB against Stanley Powers Lake. At 3 o'clock this afternoon, the double-A championship. Two-time defending state champion Shanley against Grafton. And then it'll be a battle of Bismarck as the Demons will take on the Patriots after the news at 6.30. So it's a west-west in triple-A. It's an east-east in double-A. And there's your lineup, Dakota Bowl 2011. Well, this nine-man championship game, LT, Napoleon Gackle Streeter, when you first think of them, you think them as a perennial state champion, as a frequent visitor to the Dakota Bowl. This is just their third trip. They have one state championship. And for North Star, this is a whole new game, baby. Yep, brand new. First chance for a football championship again these kids and a lot of these names will sound familiar when we start talking about them if you're a basketball fan yeah. because it is the team that ran the table last year undefeated class b state champions a lot of those kids who are good on the basketball court are good on the football field as dominant as the two teams were in the regular season each played very close games in the playoffs napoleon defeated new rockford handily in the north border and then in the semifinals last week, Edge Weinmere Lidgewood, 20 to 14. North Star also had a couple of close calls. Yes, they did. The Divide County game, Divide was a very big, strong, tough team. And uh, they had to, um, you know, come up and stop the run, which they did. Central McLean, um, the same type of team. That's uh, Underwood, Sir Lake Mercer, uh, McCluskey, Central McLean, a big, strong type team. So North Star's defense certainly had to come up and, and uh, stop the run. But today, uh, we have two teams that certainly embrace the pass, so we'll look for that. Jacob Kauker has had a couple of cups of coffee, and uh, he's ready to go too, Jacob. Bright and early down here on the field. Everybody is ready to go. These teams are, even though it's 9 o'clock, they're excited, they're pumped up, and this is going to be one of the better matchups of the day. You've got two of the teams that have been the best teams throughout the year in nine-man, so we're going to have a good one right out of the gate. Thank you very much, Jacob, and we do want to wish uh, happy Veterans Day to everyone out there today. For all of you who served our country, thank you for your service and helping preserving our freedom. Absolutely, both in your family and my family. That's right. uh, so yes, thank you, veterans. That's right. So it's going to be a fun day of football here at the Fargo Dome, and as we said in this first game, we're going to see uh, two teams that, uh, particularly when you talk about North Star, similar to their basketball team. They kind of like to fast break at LT. They like to go, and they will be triggered by Jacob uh, Hagler, the quarterback, and he passes a bunch to Daniel Grandy. That'll be a combo that we'll try to watch on the North Stars side of things. And then Jonah Schwarzenberger, well, he has uh, over 2,100 yards passing. So again, uh, Napoleon's a team traditionally you think of as being a run first team, yeah. but they certainly have passed well this year. On this Veterans Day, now the presentation of colors, and we honor our country with the national anthem. On this Veterans Day, November 11th, 2011, we honor the many Americans who have proudly served our country. 
This year, 2011, marks the 10th anniversary of the 2001 September 11th attacks on the New York World Trade Center, the Pentagon Building in Washington, D.C., and perhaps many other sites and cities that were intended targets on American soil that day. May we reflect on the many courageous acts of heroism from so many American men and women who on that day rose from obscurity to unconditionally defend our nation. Today we see Americans dressed in uniform representing our state and our nation, serving unconditionally to defend our freedom and keeping harm's way from our state and nation. Representing our state are the proud soldiers of the North Dakota Army National Guard. We thank them for their courageous service and for being with us today on this Veterans Day of 2011 as they escort our anthem singer by the way of a U.S. military Humvee. Singing our national anthem today is West Fargo High School student John Jonke. Please remain standing at attention until the colors have been retired. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare no bones bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave This national anthem presentation has been brought to you by American Bank Center, member FDIC, your source for banking, investments, trust, and insurance. Dakota Bowl 2011 opens next with the nine-man championship game, Napoleon Gackle Streeter and North Star. Napoleon Gackle Streeter, North Star. The Bearcats won last year's Class B Boys State Basketball Championship. A host of athletes on this football team that were also part of the basketball team. Napoleon Gackle Streeter has come close, LT, the last few years. In fact, they have lost to the eventual state champion in each of the past four playoffs. Yes, uh, obviously a trend. <laughs> the Imperials will uh, try to to not have happened this year. Brooks Zenker to kick it off to Drew Schill. He feels it at the 15. Schill will take it to the 30-yard line. And that's where the Bearcats, 11 and one, will start the football game. They were undefeated until the final regular season game of the year, dropped that game, and then advanced here to the Dakota Bowl. And Napoleon's lone loss was to Hankinson. And after talking uh, with the kids and stuff like that this week, they said, hey, the best thing that happened to us is that we played poorly after a big win against Widener Lidgerwood. Jacob Hagler, one of the two guards on the basketball team, is the quarterback also here on the football team. Split backs with him, and Daniel Grandy is his favorite target. He's looking for Grandy deep down the far sideline, and he's got him. Grandy caught it at the 40. He's inside the 25. 
and the big play offense of North Star connects on the first play of the game, and no surprise, it's the two basketball stars, Jacob Hagley, Hagler to Daniel Grandy. Boy, Grandy with 74 catches now this year, and this one's a big one right here. He, uh, it, it's going to put him close to, what, 1,360 yards or yeah. something like that? I mean, it is unusual to have a pitch and catch combo that has been as effective because teams know it's going to happen, and here it comes right off the bat. Schwarzenberger was guarding him, had up, even with the deep safety, still beat him deep. It's a 50-yard gain on first down on Grandy's 74th reception of the season. He's again wide to the right. They'll go right back to him, and he catches it and takes it to the 14-yard line, a pickup of six. So that's 75 catches on the season now for Grandy. 1,360 yards, 19 touchdowns. And yet, LT, when you take a look at the North Star offense, Despite those gaudy passing numbers, they're, they're pretty balanced as you take a look at their offense. Brooks Larson, Joshua Haugen, Larson, and then the uh, tailback is Braun, Sager, Grandy, the wide receiver as we have well established. And here's their first running play of the game and they'll take it inside the 10 and be first and goal as Colton Braun, the 6'1", 175 pound junior, gives the Bearcats first and goal at the eight yard line. The def defense Here's for Napoleon is Andrew Biney, John Whitmer, and Kari Ko uh, Koenig, rather. Rathwald, Weigel, Breitenbach, and Reese, the linebackers, Schwarzenberger, and Federig, the DBs, and so far, the DBs have been tested by number five. I formation, Ethan Sager is the fullback as Grandy motions to the far side of the field. Braun will try to break it outside, and he's met by a wall of tacklers, including Corey Koenig, the 230-pound sophomore. Napoleon Gackle Streeter has nice size up front defensively and offensively, LT. They, they really do. But the, the one thing, too, though, that Coach McCleary from uh, Napoleon Gackle Streeter said when looking at North Star, he said, well, it's the best line that I've seen on film. So you talk yeah. a lot about the passing, and obviously there's some kids with some pretty good rushing. You know, uh, Braun will, will go over 900 yards. Sager has over 700. But as always in football, it's the guys up front that make a good team good. Here is Hagler. He's flushed out, rolling to his left, looking. He's going to try to run. Now he throws it to the end zone. That ball is deflected off two different receivers and falls incomplete. It deflected off Josh Haugen initially. And it'll be third and goal, and we do have a flag on the play. Well, the thing that made that difficult there for Hagler is that every receiver in his first initial look is to his right. But that's also where the pressure comes from as we take a look here on the uh, Farmers Union Insurance Instant Replay. Then Hagler will try to go to Brian's son, the coach's son. That's Josh off his fingertips and uh, just a little bit uh, underthrown there for Grandy. Ineligible downfield receiver on North Star. Not a surprising penalty to be picked up on that type of play when you really have an ad lib play developing unexpectedly. The white hat, by the way, who we just saw, that's Kim Anderson and his crew come from Dickinson today. So North Star backed up to just inside the 15-yard line on their opening possession of the game, which has been highlighted by a 50-yard completion. Hagler to Grandy. Hagler rolling out to his right, looking for Grandy, who's trying to get away from defenders in the end zone. Now he fires, and it's over the head of his intended receiver. I think that was Ethan Sager. One thing that's interesting about Hagler is that as a freshman, he was second in the state in number of receptions. So he played wide out, and then when it was his turn to be the quarterback, and obviously the ball continued yeah. to be in the air for North Star, but yeah, the pass is thrown a little bit uh, too high that time. It, uh, I think the Bearcats had a little bit of a crossing pattern on the far side, but Hagler's feet, too, he does a real good job of just buying time. We've seen that already today, that he will be a tough guy to try and sack. Grandy and Sager, two receivers to the near side of the field. They're going to roll out and look for Grandy. He caught it! Touchdown! Daniel Grandy goes up over two defenders for the touchdown on third and goal. And North Star scores on its opening possession. Boy, the Bearcats had a little ball. It's a deep out pattern. 
So Hagler, or excuse me, Grandy's coming down. He's got two guys on him. He cuts out, and then it splits those two guys, creates enough space. Hagler drops it right in there in the back of the end zone. The feet are down, and the hands are in the air. Daniel Grandy is 6'2", and he certainly had an advantage over the two Napoleon Gackles feeder defenders as Jacob Hagler throws his 30th touchdown pass of the year. Grandy catches his 20th. Now the two-point conversion. Hagler rolling out. Looking, and he's got it. Complete to Josh Haugen. It's North Star 8, and Napoleon Gackle street or nothing on that 70-yard drive on the first possession of the football game. Now, I know the answer to this, but did you say 13 or 30? <laughs> I s you know the answer to that. That would be 30th touchdown pass of the season by this man. And again, he does a good job with his feet to buy time to let his tight end, Josh Haugen, come in and make that catch. I mean, Haugen is the number two receiver on the year for North Star, and coming into this game, nine catches. Yeah. So, I mean, that's how much and how important that Daniel Grandy has been. And obviously, you know, he had the big catch and he had the touchdown catch. Impressive opening possession by the Bearcats. And, and when you're North Star and you've got the kind of lethal combination of Jacob Hagler and Daniel Grandy, and you like the matchup that they had on the first offensive play of the game, uh, you go for it. Well, and, and the thing that early on you're seeing with Grandy is that he is moving. He's not necessarily just standing there. He is making the defense move. Yep. You put the defense back at a little bit, uh, you know, on their heels. You make Coach McCleary there. His kids need to make some adjustments. And between Schwarzenberger and Fedick, they've made those adjustments. And in six plays and only 2-12, it's a touchdown. Hayden Larson will kick it off. And this is Jared Rice at the 30. And he meets a couple of... North Star Bearcats, including Hayden Larson at the 32-yard line. We do have a flag on the play. I think there's a hold. The telecast of these tournament games has been authorized by special arrangement with the Board of Directors of the North Dakota High School Activities Association. Dakota Bowl 2011, we're with you all day. This is wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the nine-man Class A. Class AA and Class AAA Holding state football on championship the offense, game. Ten yard yeah, penalty. Depending first basically down. on how fast the first three games kind of determines how long and if we get a break <laughs> into that fourth game because because uh, we'll try to get the news in there and the Bismarck Century game will go right at 6.30. Otherwise, it's 30 minutes after, 30 minutes after in these first games. A four receiver set. Schwarzenberger throws it over the middle. That ball is complete to Steven Weigel. Weigel breaks a tackle and takes it across the 30-yard line to the 32. So that's a pickup of 15 yards. Well, much like we saw North Star go to its best and favorite receiver, same thing happens right here. Steven Weigel is 42nd catch of the year. Schwarzenberger, like Hagler, has real good feet. He's a tough guy to try and sack. He will buy some time um, in the pocket. Sometimes in nine man, you don't really have much of a pocket, but it'll be there. Schwarzenberger, the slant over the middle, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. That was Wade Rathwald, who at 6'2", is a nice size target for the quarterback, Jonah Schwarzenberger, who has also thrown, coming into this game, for 29 touchdown passes on the season. But he's also a threat with his legs. He's rushed for more than 700 yards on the season. You're right. I should correct myself. I know that uh, Weigel, as the wideout's the top receiver, but as the tight end, uh, Rathwald has more catches coming into the game than anyone else. I knew that's what you meant. Schwarzenberger will fire wide open. And this will be Jared Rice near first down yardage at the 41-yard line. I think he's just a hair shy, but Sean Marchie has had to make a couple of tackles. Well, this one this one was a tackle. The one before was a separation. He took the yeah. ball away from Rathwald right here. Rice makes the catch and is able to get both feet on the ground and, and uh, well, tried to move just a little sideways to get that first down. Didn't quite do it. Well, fans needed a little pick-me-up, a little jump start. They're this getting it, it by <laughs> seeing these football teams come out and throw the football. Here's Schwarzenberger, he's got a blocker. He's in the open field, inside the 35, and he'll take it to the 30-yard line. Jonah Schwarzenberger gives the Napoleons a first down at the North Star 30. 
Bryce, the number one rusher this year for Napoleon. We just watched the number two rusher. When you spread the field, you take that defense, get them a couple of steps wider than they want to be, and that opens up some opportunities like that run there from Schwarzenberger, the senior in his third year as the starting quarterback at Napoleon. Weigel and Fedig are the receivers to the far side of the field. Another four receiver set. Rath Wold went up two to the right. They're going to fire out to the left, and that ball's complete to Weigel, and he's tackled at the 19 yard line. That's two defenders were there. Drew Schill and Grandy will make the stop. That's just where in nine man football you can have that advantage. I mean, there's two less guys out there to try and cover. So, so basically, you know, you eliminate a couple of guys on down line, but you don't have that necessarily that safety help in the flat and you can run one guy inside, one guy outside, you hit the good pass, and you have uh, enough space to gain the first down. Rathwald has one-on-one -on -one coverage with Brooks Larson here on the near side of the field. Schwarzenberger lobbing it to the end zone. Open receiver, caught, touchdown. Trent Fettig brings it in for Napoleon Gackle Streeter and the Imperials score on their first possession. Somehow I'm not surprised that each one of these two teams came out came out doing what they do well. That's move the ball through the air. Great time there from Schwarzenberger. And just like the touchdown pass to Grandy, he put that right where, where Fettig could get it and the defender could not. And, and that's it a, went right over Schill. That's a pretty ball. That's a very un-Donovan McNabb-like throwing ball <laughs> because it was a tight spiral. Schwarzenberger now, two-point conversion, <laughs> keeps it himself, and he's into the end zone. And both of these offenses are perfect on their first touches of the day, producing touchdowns and two-point conversions. Hey, we're off to a great start. It's 8-8 in the nine-man championship game. We are off and running. Well, actually, we're off and passing, passing. here in the nine-man state championship game. Yes, only one town will wear the crown today as Napoleon Gackle Streeter and North Star are tied at 8-8, a six-play, 83-yard drive using just a minute and 22 seconds. Jonas Schwarzenberger throws his 30th touchdown pass of the year to tie the game. I think we have an offside or something yep. right off the bat on the kickoff. Two flags lying at the 40. But yeah, these two quarterbacks just have outstanding numbers coming into this game, and we have seen why. Encroachment well, you know, on the kicking team. When Napoleon Gattel Streeter is throwing a four-receiver set out, it, it really does extremely stretch your defense. And if any of those receivers get any separation at all, then Schwarzenberger is certainly going to have at least one target, if not two, on practically every play. Yeah, especially if you can't get pressure on that quarterback and and yeah Schwarzenberger won't quite roll out and buy time running as much no. as like Hagler will but he is very I mean he's got real good feet in traffic Brooks Zenker's kickoff is uh, swirling to the left back-to-back -back flags and back-to-back -back flags the offense will just come out yep. here well, North Star last year defeated Kick. Grafton for the Class B Boys State Basketball Championship. Later today, we'll see Grafton. And much like this Bearcat team, there are some key pieces of the Spoilers team that were on that basketball, basketball. team a year ago. And much like Napoleon has done, Grafton will come with four wides. Very much spread offense. And that's why... <laughs> These two teams love playing here. You don't have to worry about the prairie winds blowing across North Dakota. You don't have to worry about rain or sleet nope. or snow. This is just perfect playing conditions for a couple of quarterbacks and offenses who love to throw the football, but they'll run the football. And Ethan Sager has a big hole up the middle, but he fumbled the football, and the Imperials have recovered at their own 49-yard line. It's Schwarzenberger with the fumble recovery. Boys, uh, just an excellent job up the middle with Sager. Right now, he's got both hands around the football, but that was Schwarzenberger who came in, hit the football, got yeah. his shoulder on the football, and uh, got the separation between the, the football and the carrier, and then it came right back down to Jonah, and he was able to, uh, to pick up that fumble. Cole Breidenbach made the initial tackle, and then Schwarzenberger, Schwarzenberger came in and stripped it away. He'll go back to work now with his arm. He's throwing deep. That ball is picked off. They give it right back, and it's Brooks Larson coming up with the interception for North Star at the 30-yard line. So we will trade turnovers. 
this is a pass that Schwarzenberger is going to want back is it is it he misses to the inside yeah if you make this throw you need to miss long and you need to miss outside Rice had a little bit of separation but the pass was just simply too short Larson's second interception of the year just the eighth interception of the season thrown by a Schwarzenberger yeah, their efficiency ratings, both quarterbacks are outstanding. Time, they both have 30 touchdowns now, and that's Jonah's, what, eighth, and uh, Jacob's only thrown five. Sager the fullback, and here's, or this is Sager, rather, on the carry. Colton Braun the fullback. Not much going there as Koenig made a nice play defensively for Napoleon Gackle Streeter. Yeah, you know, Corey Koenig is able to come in and, you know, as, as much as you love to be able to throw the ball and be effective with it, you just can't do it all the time. No. And um, both teams were able to have some success through the air, so it's not a big surprise, I don't think, to see North Star come out here and want to try to get a little bit of a ground game going. No gain on the first play. Now Grandy under pressure flushes out to his right. He's Hagler's got Grandy open at the 50. Grandy breaks the tackle, still on his feet, and he'll take it inside the 35-yard line, and there may be more yards coming here because we have a flag on the play. Uh, the flag is a face mask. You know, these two guys just have such great instincts and, together. And, and this athleticism. Is, but this is an instinctive play because it was designed to be a deep route back over the middle to Grandy. He saw his quarterback go back out to the right, immediately Fire broke off to the right. On the defense, added on to the run, first down. So tag on the face mask penalty on top of that 37 yard connection but from the, but the big, Hagler to Grandy. The big key to that though is once the scramble happens, the double team becomes ineffective because you lose one of the guys. Yeah. It becomes a one on one on the far side and Grandy wins that battle easily. From the Imperials, 29. Hagler's got a man wide open. Brooks Larson will take it inside the five yard line. A 25 yard gain. So North Star has hit Napoleon Gackle Streeter with big plays. A 50 yarder in the first possession, that 25 yarder in the 37 yarder the play before. Beautiful angle on the Nodak Mutual Insurance uh, replay to watch that play open up. I mean, I know everyone loves seats on the 50-yard line, but sometimes the best seats to watch the action are ones on the end, right where that camera is. You can see how things opened up, and he was able to spot the guy underneath because, of course, um, you know, Grandy uh, demands so much attention. Hand off to Sager, and he'll take it to the one. Six, 18 and running, and a very offensive, dictated first quarter here in the nine-man state championship game. Sager just a yard shy of his 11th rushing touchdown of the year. And this is one of those cases you, you talked about the respect that Napoleon Gackle Streeter has for this offensive line for North Star. Hayden Larson, Steve Hunt, Nolan Reeder. I mean those are that's the heart and soul of that offensive line and that'll be a touchdown as Hagler will keep it himself and the Bearcats regain the lead. Larson goes 255, Stephen Hunt goes 255, and Nolan Reeder goes about 210. That's really good size for North Dakota nine-man football up front. Yes, no doubt about it. And, you know, Hayden Larson is a guy who uh, just has had a phenomenal year on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively. I mean, it's not often that a lineman gets player of the year considerations in the region. Larson's one of them. Hagler throwing to Grandy for the two-point conversion, and that's money in the bank. And with 5.52 left here in the first quarter, it's North Star 16 and Napoleon Gackle Streeter 8. Always getting Jacob Hagler on the move somehow, aren't they, LT? They oh. will not take any chances of letting any kind of pass rush from Napoleon Gackle Street or interrupt with what they want to do offensively. But if he even senses it, too, he's moving as well. So, yeah, Hagler is... Um, well, he's a coach's kid. There you go. I mean, his dad is the basketball coach. He's the coach. basketball coach. Jeff is his dad. And, and you know, when you're a coach's son, as, you know, Josh Haugen is, is Brian's son, also playing in this game, number 82. But there's, there's a preparation, there's a mindset, and there's, um, in, especially in Hagler's case, 
And when we saw it in basketball, there's a competitive spirit that kind of goes within that family yeah. that you can't teach. It just kind of absorbs. It's and the bloodline. And then you get to watch it. Five play, 70 yard drive. That took just two minutes and seven seconds. And at this pace, LT. <laughs> you want me to start we're, looking at the records for most points scored in a well, Dakota Bowl game? We're heading that direction. <laughs> it may be in Rice. jeopardy. <laughs> Rice on the re return across the 30, breaks a tackle. How about that? And Rice will take it to the 35-yard line after breaking that arm tackle. Well, he's a guy that loves contact. In fact, he loves contact so much he'll seek it out when he has the football. But he's, uh, he's a state wrestling champion, and there's a reason for that. Jared Rice here, he, you know, not the fastest kid in the world, but, boy, he is tough, hard-nosed, and over 1,200 yards rushing coming into this game. And so there's a reason that he's back there returning the kicks. He was just, what, a yard shy of 100 last week. So uh, he's a guy that they count on a lot. After the 25-yard kick return, the Imperials from their own 35. Rice will carry. He's got a good lead blocker. He's in the open field inside North Star territory, and Rice will take it to the 25-yard line. Oh, big plays are popping out all over at the Fargo Dome this morning. Well, there is... Uh, the double is to the wide side, to the left side, so that's where the defense obviously has to hedge. So if you can pop one on the near side, boy, there's nobody left. Hagler's playing, you know, he's the DB or the safety in this case. He is over by the other hash mark, so it, it takes a long time for him to get over. This will be a personal foul penalty against North Star, so. So that goes to the end of the run. End of the run. Boy, what a great job by the, not only the offensive line for Napoleon Gackle Streeter because they blew a big hole open. And Rice had a great lead block. Well, so we, we talk about hard-nosed kids and, and a good offensive line, you know, for uh, for North Star. The same, a lot can be said because, uh, you know, Rice is a wrestler. Finey is a good wrestler. Yeah. Uh, Whit uh, Whitmer is a very good wrestler. You get wrestlers who understand leverage and know how to get inside on guys that helps too schwarzenberger from the 12 will take it to the nine nice solid tackle by grandy neither defense has been able to stop the opposing offense to this point in the game two possessions for north star Two touchdowns, and now Napoleon Gackle Streeter within nine yards of its second score. I know where there's still five minutes left of the first quarter, but you know what? It doesn't appear like either one's going to be able to all day long, does Rice it? Rice gets the sideline and then bounced out of bounds. Josh Haugen was there for the Bearcats. So was Brooks Larson. But Andrew Viney was unable to get upfield and that took the play really away. We'll see it here in the Farmers Union Insurance replay. Watch number 51, and he's coming to make the pull, and then whoever it is, and I didn't catch his number right away, still didn't there, uh, that's Larson, who gets a good shoulder into the yep. lead blocker, and that takes Rice off his game. He's forced to bounce, and that's where the help was. Great play by Larson, who warded off that Biney block, bounced outside, and drove Rice out of bounds. Schwarzenberger. To the five, to the end zone, touchdown. Napoleon Gackle Streeter answers again. Boy, did Jared Rice throw a block right there. He took Daniel Grandy out. And, and there's five right there. It's right in your screen as, as he did a great job of taking the linebacker out of the play. Grandy, the leading tackler as well yeah. for the defense. So he's gone. Schwarzenberger goes in. 4.43 yet to play in the first quarter. We've had 30 combined points scored, and the Imperials look to tag on a couple more on the two-point conversion. Four receivers set. Now Rice will motion to the far side of the field. Schwarzenberger throws underneath. That ball caught, and into the end zone for the two-point conversion is John Widmer, the 230-pound senior. And hang on, folks. We've got a scoring fest. Yeah, Rathwald runs a little bit of a skinny post. It opens up for the outside for the guy who's listed as the right guard. You got to right. love line man football. Well, and, and as you noted, as we were chatting prior to broadcast time, <laughs> one thing you love about nine-man football is 
when you take a look at the stats and you find that each of these teams have a guard who has carried the football, football on several yep. occasions this year. Yeah, somehow I don't think we'll, you know, we'll see that tomorrow when we're <laughs> televising the Bison game. Austin Richard won't get a carry. <laughs> Not likely, no. 16-16. Oh, that record's going down oh, today. Without a doubt. I just most, most points scored by two teams, 70. That was Trinity and Rugby in 2000. We're, we're nearly halfway there, LT, and we still have almost five minutes to play in the opening quarter. Now, that one's going down. Here's Grandy at the 30, and he'll take it out to the 35-yard line. Oh, yeah, Ken Wasepka, who types all this stuff up for you to see at home, he's been as busy as the guys out on the field. Another quick, <laughs> another quick strike possession. That scoring drive, if you want to call it that, LT, took 61 seconds. Isn't that a crazy? Okay, here's the <laughs> longest scoring drive, the first one of the game. Yeah. Two minutes and 12 seconds. <laughs> 212, 122, 207, uh, 101. Yes. And whoever doesn't make a two-point conversion, that might be the difference in the ball game, and I know it's early, but. Well, the way things are going, it's trending that way, without a doubt. Hagler throws underneath. He's got his man, Josh Haugen, there, and Josh Haugen will take it out to the 36-yard line. Well, again, just the presence of Grandy draws that defense so deep. Much like Larson had that nice catch near the goal line the other way, this time it opens up here for Haugen, kind of the same thing. You know, if he's not open, he's op he, meaning Grandy, he's obviously drawing the attention of the guys out there in the blue, and someone else is wide open, this case the flat. That should be open all day long. Steven Weigel draws the assignment on Grandy, and then of course you see Schwarzenberger over on that side of the field as well. But they'll run the football and a good stick by Andrew Biney at the 39 yard line as he puts down Ethan Sager to the Fargo Dome turf. Yeah, defensively, the way that Coach McCleary um, defined Biney, he just simply said he's our run stopper. And there we just saw why. Kept his shoulders square, got his arms around, nice textbook tackle. Again, being a wrestler certainly helps with that. Takedown. Two points. Six one two thirty and a junior is Andrew Biney. Koenig up front goes six three two thirty. He's a sophomore, and then you have Widmer six two two thirty and a senior. That's your defensive front for Napoleon Gackle Streeter. That ball is incomplete. Intended for Brooks Larson at about the forty five yard line. And Breitenbach, who had his helmet come off, was in real good position there. That was a tough pass this time from Hagler. He's rolling out. He doesn't really have a lot of pressure, but he can sense it coming. There's Biney coming his way. And his window to get this in there, very small. And we have our first defensive stop on possessions, other than the turnovers, yeah. the quick turnovers that we saw, the fumble and the consequent uh, interception. This will be our first punt of the game. Grandy, a line drive punt, punting it away from Rice, and it does it effectively. Wow, look at this bounce. As It'll go inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. So nicely done by Grandy, who didn't want to give Rice any opportunity to return that punt. Boy, and the defense, I was going to say, comes off the field, but in this game, uh, both, uh, you know, basically, it, it's not all nine, but pretty close to all nine guys stay on there. Yep. But the, the, the theme is the same. The kids have to feel good about themselves, Imperials here, in order to force a punt. From the 19. For a while there, I was beginning to wonder if punting was outlawed in nine man <laughs> football. <laughs> That's kind of the way it looked, didn't it? Yes, it did for a great portion of this first quarter. Low snap, but Schwarzenberger brings it in. Lobs it. Whew, that's a risky pass, but it's caught at the 31-yard line. I don't know how it got there. And that is hauled in by Trent Fettig and good enough for a first down. I say that because the defense was outstanding on Fedek and Schwarzenberger, uh, he didn't have many options here, no, he and here comes Fedek. Last week he had a touchdown catch, Fedek did. He drops it in there perfectly. Larson was there, and I think Hagler was the other guy who was over there. Man, that's a sweet pass. 12-yard pickup on first down. Rice running to his left, and nothing going. Uh, he got back to the original line of scrimmage, and that was it. Flag came from the high side, the line judge on the far side, 
and so that will be a hold against Napoleon. Coach McCleary there, 36 and five in his four years as the head coach. Real familiar name for anyone who is part of the Napoleon Gackle Streeter district or familiar with that region and well, that his, area. Yeah, his family, I mean, his dad, Barry, is still the wrestling coach yeah. there. And then there were McCleary's uh, you know, off of Barry's family and then cousins that were there for a long, long time. Similar to the Hagler name up around the area that makes up North Star. And Kelly uh, played college football at the University of Mary as well. First and 19. Lots of time. Look at Schwarzenberger. Just stand back there and survey the field and find a man open. Steven Weigel out at the 42-yard line. So they get back the penalty and more. And this is going to be very close to a first down, and they'll move the chain. Travis Blake, number 70 in the middle. He goes down and kind of twists. He runs into one of his players, and he was holding his right knee. And he'll limp off right there. But that helped allow Schwarzenberger have enough time because a couple of the Bearcats took themselves out of the play. There's, there's Blake. Now yeah, Schwartz, he's a senior. Yep. Schwarzenberger had multiple seconds to find a receiver. Wade Rathwall, the lone receiver to the far side of the field. Again, he's six-two, approaching 60 catches on the year. Run the option, and Schwarzenberger will keep it. He's got the corner inside the 50, and he'll take it to the 46-yard line before Drew Schill brings him down. But the Imperials are on the move again. Kind of a popular play you're seeing teams uh, at, at all levels in high school and college run this. It's just kind of a quarterback read. Yep. He puts it in the belly of his running back, and if he sees his key, he's pulling it and going that time. And, uh, and again, we've talked about the success teams have had passing. Both coaches would certainly love to see a little bit of balance and, and some success, but there's Schwarzenberger with a first down run. From the 45 of North Star in the 16-16 tie. Final two minutes of the first quarter. Wide open in the middle is Weigel. He breaks a tackle and he spins for a couple more to the 28-yard line and a pickup of 17. Schill makes the tackle for North Star. Well, this is a real nice play coming off the read run. Now it's a now he pulls it back uh, on the pass. You show the same look on the run. It keeps the lineman, you know, going, oh Jesus, is this a run? No, he pulled it out, pass, Weigel was was just wide open on a little uh, delayed kind of a tight end move right up the yeah. middle. Good play combo selection by Napoleon Gackle Streeter on, on this series, really giving more for that North Star defense to think about. And it all centers around Schwarzenberger and his decisions here in this possession. Rice will carry. He's got room up the middle. Rice inside the 20, still on his feet. And he'll take it to the 13-yard line. That's 15 yards for Jared Rice. You know, I think it was uh, a, a, a commercial with the Marines a few years ago that said, we do more before 9 a.m. than most, <laughs> most people do all day. These two teams have done more in the first quarter than most teams will do all day offensively. It's, just, it's been a treat to watch. Both offenses work so well. Well, Andrew Biney got another great block on that play. And He's, he's winning his, his challenges up front for Napoleon Gackle Streeter. And they're going to run behind Biney again. And this will be Trent Fettig. But a good defensive play to stop Fettig at the 10 yard line. The Bearcats defender still on the field. That's Grandy coming up a little slow, but Hayden Larson really uh, is the guy that kind of makes the right read. Grandy plays off his block, but Larson just comes smoking down that line and is able to make the read on that play going outside and moving very well side to side was Larson for, you know, what's he, he's listed at 225. I mean, yeah. he's, he's had a super year defensively. Keep your eye on Grandy. You didn't see him, but he left the field favoring one of his legs, and he's on that North Star sideline right now. Schwarzenberger thought about throwing the football. He rolls right. Now he looks to the cusp of the end zone, and it's caught by Weigel at the one yard line, and that'll be a first down for Napoleon Gackle Streeter. First and goal inside the one. A perfect example of how Schwarzenberger buys time. He does it in traffic so well. You think he's going to run. Nope, he goes, he, he flattens out a little bit, lets Weigel open up, and Weigel had to make an adjustment to the ball down to the one. Napoleon Gackle Streeter tried to hurry back to the line and get a quick snap off, but a flag comes in 
Dead ball. Encroachment on the defense. And Half the distance. against Norse. Remains first down. And when you're possessing the football where you are there, <laughs> Half the distance of the goal line is but mere inches. I guess technically it has to go down as like a one-yard penalty, yes, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I don't think there's a space for a, a one-foot <laughs> penalty in the uh, in the box somewhere. This will be one of the last couple plays of the first quarter, if not the last. Fumble. Rice fumbled the football at the goal line. Woo! No. North Star has and it. North Star has it. It is recovered. It looks like Alex Weston. The freshman, 6'5", oh. Rice just never had it from the get-go, and it bounces underneath oh, kind of his armpit. Schwarzenegger Berger makes a play for it, but it, it is Weston who keeps the Imperials out of the end zone. That is a painful turnover. If you're Napoleon Gackle Streeter, it's second turnover of the day. It looked like they were on the verge of taking their first lead of the day. Instead, with eight seconds left in the corner, North Star has it at its own one yard line and nothing much going there for Sager. He met Finey and several others. First quarter. End of one quarter and the Dakota Bowl 2011. The nine man championship game has been dictated by offense. After one quarter, Napoleon Gackle Streeter 16 and North Star 16. Yes, you will. Out of the end zone, Hagler looking to throw. Oh, little misread there between Hagler and Grandy. Hagler was expecting Grandy to move to the outside toward the sideline, and Grandy threw it up the field. Boy, the two DBs that time, Fedek and Schwarzenberger, re they really closed down their double team. I mean, they've been close to Grandy. We'll keep an eye on Daniel, too, because you mentioned how he came off yeah. um, and, and sat out a defensive play there. Well, here's a chance for Napoleon Gackle Street now, despite the fact that they turned the ball over right on the verge of taking the lead. They get a stop here. You force North Star into punting out of the end zone and get very good field position off the change of possessions. Hagler from the end zone, firing to Grandy. Oh, he made a phenomenal effort. It's incomplete, but boy, Grandy went up and with one paw tried to bring that football in. And you can tell from his reaction that he expects to catch this ball. I mean, he expects to catch anything, and he almost wow. pulled that in with his with the one hand. And Weigel and Schwarzenberger both there defensively. I saw that Weigel uh, put a jam on him that time at the line of scrimmage. So Grandy from the very back of the North Star end zone will have to punt it away. Rice is standing inside his 40. Low line drive kick. Wow, look at this field position. It's going to go out of bounds just right around the 20 yard line. Oh, yes, at the left. 20 yard line. <laughs> that thing just took a yeah. uh, that dead left. That was like a, a green wing teal and about a 40 mile an hour wind. <laughs> Completely hooked to the left. So are we assuming that you actually hit the bird with your shot? You know, you know how difficult it is to hit a green wing <laughs> teal in a 40 mile an hour wind. No, I would not say that I hit that bird. Okay, not I, at thought, all. I thought you were making an no, assumption there. No, I would have spread a lot of steel into the air, but certainly not saying I would have hit the bird. As Schwarzenberger, little option again, cuts it back. Look at him pick his way inside the 15 to the 14. Good nice. six-yard pickup. There wasn't a clear path or alley there, LT, but Schwarzenberger did it on his own. But he'll get a nice kick out here. Watch 53. That's uh, Widmer. Widmer will get in Grandy's way and allows him to get what he did. I mean, most teams will be just, you know, thrilled to pick up six or seven yards yeah. on first down. And today with these two teams, that seems, <laughs> so far that seems like that hasn't, hasn't been much. But, yeah, that's an effective first down play. So this possession started in the red zone for Napoleon Gackle Streeter, which again is threatening to take its first lead of the day. Schwarzenberger looking for Rath Wall to the end zone. Ball's picked off. Oh, he threw that ball off target, and Drew Schill has the easy interception. Well, that was a miscommunication, miscommunication because Rathwald was uh, would made a double move, and then at the end, he saw the opening back to the inside, right about where the N is in NDSU, and then uh, the quarterback, Schwarzenberger, didn't see Wade make that last move. The ball was already in the air. He moved to the open part of the field. The covered part was Drew Schill. Ooh. Napoleon Gackle Streeter with three turnovers in the game. Two coming as they seemingly were about to score. One on the goal line and one there inside the 20 yard line. And here comes Colton Braun, the 6'1", 175 pound junior who during the season
rushed for nearly 900 yards, and he'll take it out just past the 25. Farmers Union Insurance replay as we watch this run. I'm going to go back to the previous play and Schill's interception and yeah. talk a little bit about Drew because he probably came up with the defensive play of the game last week against Divide County. Drew's but 5'4", 5'5", weighs about 140 pounds. Yeah. He took down home on a fourth and two with about five minutes to go and turned the tide last week. Little man making a big play as Colton Braun turns it up, but uh, look at that play by Biney. And Andrew Biney has, has really been a force on both sides of the football for the Imperials here in the first half. Well, it's important as a nose guard, he gets his hands up and then that he can free himself after making the read, kind of get you know, move the guy who's trying to block you and then get down the line. He gets down the line with very good speed. We saw it from Hayden Larson for North Star. We're seeing it here from uh, Andrew Biney and Napoleon Gackle Streeter. The Bearcats looking at third down here from their 26 yard line. They need to get to the 30. They fire to Grandy. He caught the football, tackled immediately by Weigel on the play, but that'll be good enough for a Bearcat first down. Well, I know that uh, Grandy kind of has a green light basically to change any route that he wants at any time that he wants. This one was designed. He didn't change this. This is a short out. You see the little orange tag there that just went off on the top of your screen. That's the first down marker. He, knew he knows he needs to be a yard further than that. Yeah. Good recognition by Grandy on the play, who I don't, I don't think is still, you know, 100% right now compared to where he was when he tweaked his leg, ankle, whatever it was, a little bit earlier in the game. Braun will carry, and Braun breaks outside. He's in the open field at midfield. Braun inside the 40 and finally wrestled to the turf by Fedig, but not before he'll take it to the 34-yard line of Napoleon Gackle Streeter. This will dangerously be close to Colton's longest rush of the year as he just takes a nice job here and, and you know, Schwarzenberger has to come over, make a tackle, so does Fedek. You know, and again, those are guys who are trying to watch, you know, guys like Grandy get yeah. downfield, so when they have to come off of Grandy, go across the field to make the tackle, you know it'll be a big play. 34-yard gain by Braun, who's now over 900 yards rushing on the season. Two receivers to the near side of the field for the Bearcats, and here is Ethan Sager. And he'll take it on to his the legs. 31, a couple of yard gain. You're right with number 51 on his legs again. Josh Haugen shaking up on the play. The 6'4", 190 pound senior for North Star. There you see Josh. You know, it, it, and turf is something that it's obviously going to be new to these these teams. You know, we love the nice weather we get inside, but it comes with a much, much, much different playing surface than any of these teams have ever been on before. Schill and Grandy, receivers to the near side of the field. They throw it up for Grandy, but it's thrown to the outside incomplete. But unlike the pass we saw earlier that was picked off by Napoleon Gackle Streeter, this ball thrown to the outside where there would be no damage if it falls incomplete. Yeah, Grandy tries to make one last adjustment to the ball, but his adjustment is ha uh, just too big. He can't you know, shoot himself backwards that fast when your momentum's going forward. But you're right, thrown in a spot where your guy and only your guy has a chance to catch it. LT, we've actually had several third downs and a fourth down lately. We can't in keep that pace <laughs> up, can we? I didn't think so. Settled in a little bit here as Hagler fires in and out of the intended receiver. Ethan Sager, and it's fourth down. Trent Fettig was running with Sager, strides to stride. No so, reason not yeah, to I mean, go not, for it. Yeah, I mean, I mean neither is team, neither of these teams have a kicker who's going to boot a field goal of any particular length or a field goal period. So from the 31, despite being at fourth down and eight, you'll go for it here. Steven Weigel drawing the one-on-one -on -one assignment with Grandy here on the near side of the field. And flags come in. And this will be against North Star. Still shouldn't change the fact that you'll want to go for it. Dan, you and I will select the local Chevy dealer player of the game after this and all of our Dakota Bowl championship today. <laughs> 
Look at Baini and uh, Corey Koenig getting themselves fired up here on this fourth down play. They look like a couple of, of bucks or bulls <laughs> going at each other there. <laughs> you got hunting yeah. on the brain, don't you? you? Know, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Hagler rolling out. Grandy try and free himself got from it. defenders, and he did, and Hagler put it right on the money to the 15, a pickup of 21 and a first down. Boy, does Hagler throw well Man, on the move, doesn't what a, he? What a strike this is, LT. Sets himself in a really nice tight spiral in a spot out in front. I mean, he, you know, Grandy just doesn't have to put up any effort to catch this ball. It is right there, a deep route. Where's he at? He's a couple yards in front of the of the first down marker, so a big fourth down play. Let me throw some numbers at you. 50, 37, 25, 34, and 21. Those are the length of plays that this North Star offense has produced here in the first half. Seven forty and counting here in the half. I'll tell you what were those again? If North Star wins, I might play those in the next lot. 50, 37, <laughs> 25, 34, 21. That's right. Sounds those like are power ball numbers. Those are <laughs> <laughs> Take that to the bank, literally. Second and five, eye formation. This will be Sager carrying to the five yard line. I'll tell you if the Bearcats punch this one in, now it takes those near misses from Napoleon. Uh, and, and kind of magnifies them a little bit. Yeah, it does, because the Imperials left a minimum of 12 points, possibly up to 16 points on the field with their two turnovers deep in North Star territory. It is a first down, so it's first and goal for the Bearcats. Jacob Kalker will be with you for the Nodak Mutual Halftime Report coming up in six minutes and 56 seconds on the spot. Hagler firing and it's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. That is Wade Rath Wald who got a paw up on it, the 6'2 senior. He's trying to hit uh, Sager here on a little drag route coming out of the uh, out of the backfield and then Rathwald just jumps up and takes that away. Rathwald probably the best linebacker that Napoleon has and a couple of years ago he was unsure when coach McCleary said Wade you're going to go play linebacker he was going he was like really you know you want me to do it so there was a little bit of question mark initially how in Rathwald's mind if, if that's the position for him and obviously it is how can any football player react with anything like yeah love it <laughs> I'll play linebacker Oh, in right. and out of the hands. That would have been a touchdown had Ethan Sager been able to secure that football. Something similar to the previous play, trying to get the ball to Sager. So obviously, uh, Coach Haugen is seeing something here where he comes back, calls the same style of play. And uh, boy, that one was right there. Another very catchable ball, but Sager just didn't hold on. Third and goal for the Bearcats. Grandy and Sager, the receivers to the far side of the field, and got a Colton good, Braun. Pretty good ISO on the outside. Here's Braun up the middle, met at the two-yard line, and he'll get no further. That was a good defensive play by Cole Breidenbach, LT, who really broke down and stopped Sager from getting any further at the two. Yeah, they talk about pad level. Watch the pad level of the guy tackling. It comes lower than the guy running the ball, and then Rice is coming over to help out. Fourth and goal from the one, and when you have a quarterback like Jacob Hagler, you have a lot of options right here where he can really ad lib, do something with his feet or his arms, and North Star wants to talk about it. 616 left in the half. We are tied at 16. Off the North Star timeout, the Bearcats looking at fourth and goal from the one, looking to regain the lead here in the 
Dakota Bowl, the nine man state championship game in the Fargo Dome. Boy, fourth down plays. You got to love the drama of a fourth down play. You know it. You've got down Sager fourth. as the fullback and Braun as the tailback. And Imperial. Napoleon will say, you know what? Thank you for giving us a look at what set you're coming out with, and we want to talk about it. Got the Class A championship game coming up uh, right around noon. Linton HMB against Stanley Powers Lake. Three this afternoon, the double-A championship. Top ranked, undefeated Grafton against two-time defending state champion Shamley. And then tonight, the big schools, the Battle of Bismarck, Bismarck High and Bismarck Century. One team looking to add to its legacy of football, the other looking for its first ever football championship. And here is the Farmers Union Insurance fan camp. Farmers Union Insurance, premier partner of the North Dakota High School Activities Association. Split backs with Hagler. He looks for Grandy. He fires and he's got him. Hagler to Grandy on the connection and on fourth and goal, the Bearcats regain the lead with 6-11 to play here in the first half. And again, it's the position of the ball when it gets to the receiver right out in front. Hagler doing an outstanding job of making uh, a catchable ball for Grandy on a fourth down play so he doesn't have to, again, make adjustments to it. And as a defender, there's not much else you can do. I mean, you can't no. tackle the guy at the line of scrimmage. You want to, but you just can't. <laughs> Another touchdown pass for Hagler and on the two-point conversion, a couple of flags come in. So Hagler throws his 31st touchdown pass of the season, his second today. And the penalty will go against the Bearcats and back it up to the eight. Brian Haugen, assistant coach on the basketball team. A little different mindset, though. I mean, this North Star team came into the football season without nearly the internal expectations or external expectations that the basketball team had a year ago when everybody thought, well, they are going to win it all. That ball into the end zone and tipped away, intended for Grandy, but a good defensive play by Steven Weigel to knock it away. So the two-point conversion is denied, but with 6-11 here remaining in the first half, North Star has a 22-16 lead. Farmers Union Insurance instant replay, you can see that nice time play. where Weigel had an opportunity to make a play on the ball just because the pass was just a hair behind where Grandy wanted it. Jacob Hagler has thrown for two and ran for one. There's an actual a drive scoring drive. Yeah. <laughs> 14 plays, 80 yards. That's the longest scoring drive of this game, LT, where the others were around the two minute and one minute variety. And again, some defensive plays on the shadow of their own goal line is really what has given North Star the opportunity here to, you know, I mean, the last one was that short punt, and you get the ball back, and now you now you force Napoleon to play defense for almost five minutes. Hayden Larson will boot it away, and here they come with Trent Fettig. Fettig met at about the 28-yard line. Lots of flags. Yep. Colton Braun made the tackle, but We'll uh, see what the flags bring to light. A couple of flags laying at the 29 and 28 yard line. During the return, personal foul, face mask, 15 yard penalty, first down. Kim Anderson has officiated hundreds if not thousands of games over the years football and basketball he might have hundreds just in state tournament games yeah. when you count basketball and, uh, and all that over the years 
Great field position for the Imperials from their own 45-yard line. Another four-receiver set. Low snap. Schwarzenberger brings it in. Hits Rice. He's at the 45. Breaks away. Oh, and an ankle tackle made by Schill. Schill that uh, may have prevented Rice from breaking that the entire way. Almost a stack on the two receivers. Both guys run similar patterns. You see Rathwald on the outside kind of shields the corner and he's able to get that pass to the inside guy before Hagler, who is playing safety, can even come up and try to make a play on it. After the 13-yard game, Schwarzenberger, big hole, and he runs inside the 25 to the 24, and that's 17 yards. And how quickly the Imperials now on the brink of being on the verge of scoring again. Well, there was a great block on the edge, which opened it up for Schwarzenberger. And his reads on the running plays, boy, whatever his key is, he's reading it right because Schwarzenberger's had some big runs. Fires across the middle. That ball is caught. It's Weigel. And Weigel will take it to the just shy of the 15-yard line, actually right on the 15-yard line. Schwarzenberger's having some success over the middle now yeah. throwing the ball. Rathwald and Rice are the receivers to the far side of the field. Fedig and Steven Weigel. Near side of the field. Schwarzenberger big hole inside the five, and he'll run to the two-yard line. A 13-yard pickup before Brooks Larson got some help from a couple of buddies to bring him down. You know, it was a few years ago when Richland had that real good state championship yes. team where you saw a nine-man team come out, spread it out, and not only to throw it, but, but to run, run it. it. And they had great speed on oh, that they were, team. Oh, they were outstanding. And now you see more and more teams taking advantage of that. It's kind of what Napoleon's been doing lately. Rice will run. And he was, again, following Andrew Biney, who was pulling and trying to pull up in a hole. It's a good look there at Sean Murchie, though, the senior 210. He's the line, one of the linebackers making the play. And as weird as it sounds, this has been the danger zone for the Imperials yeah. in this quarter. They've been their worst enemy in this part of the field. Two receivers to each side of the field. Schwarzenberger looks to read and keep it himself, but he's in! He dives into the end zone after a defender had come up at about the two-yard line. So Schwarzenberger is in to tie the game at 22. Boy, the key to this is he stays patient. He really stayed patient. He allowed Viney to try and do something. Uh, which way is he going to move? Is he going to turn a guy's shoulders one way? Well, if you see that your offensive lineman turning a guy just a little bit, you take advantage of it, squeeze past him, dive in for the touchdown. You're right. Great patience there as Viney had his man engaged. And Schwarzenberger just read off of the Biney block. Napoleon Gackle Streeter, a two point conversion away from its first lead of the day. Another low snap. Schwarzenberger brings it in. Again, he's patient. Boy, look at the coverage, though. And Weigel. he finds an open man, and it's Steven Weigel for the two point conversion. And the Imperials, for the first time today, will look at the scoreboard and see they have the lead. 24-22. Well, it's just impossible to ask as a defensive player to hang with the guy, you know, even yeah. if you're trying to man him for that particular, that long. So many different things are happening. You've got guys running in all different directions right. in the end zone. Weigel's able just to sneak a little bit out to the far side, and Schwarzenberger, again with his feet, allows the two-point to happen. Well, and you have Ethan Sager back there for North Star, who's trying to defend Steven Weigel, but at the same time, has to have some attention towards Schwarzenberger, yeah, who's a runs, threat yep. with the run as well. Well, we've got the track meet mode back here now as these two teams each have scored on their last two possessions. A six play, 55 yard scoring drive from Napoleon Gackle Streeter. Used a minute and 56. And one of the bigger plays as well is the personal foul. Yeah. So you take what was decent field position for your defense to start. You get a personal foul. You're right up to mid, pretty close to midfield. And, you're, and then the Imperials are on a short field. Grandy fields the kickoff. Goes to the 32 and met by a wall of blue 
five Imperials are there. Say it's nine man football and more than half of them were, were in on that tackle. <laughs> it's good pursuit to the football when you got five and nine. Here it comes down. Yep, here it comes down to Grandy. He gets stopped. And then there's a there's a party right around <laughs> number five. A tackle party. Still 402 to play here in the first half. Got time for another what? Two or three touchdowns. A couple maybe. three more touchdowns, I would imagine. The Bearcats from their own 32. This will be Braun and not much going. Wow. Once again, great pursuit to the football. Schwarzenberger is there. Jared Rice is there. I the think Imperials had three people there, including Rad Wald. But, but uh, uh, we'll maybe see it again. I think 55. I, I think Koenig is the first one that kind of pops up and gets to him. You bet. Yep. You're, Koenig you're was the first, and then here comes the help. Well, they... They had him corralled there as legs were tied up by separate tacklers. A gain of one on the play. Clock runs with 3.20 left in the half. Hagler got a great block by Braun to give him some time and then finds Grandy across the middle. And Grandy will take it out to the 45-yard line. A pickup of 12 and a first down. After, right now, Steven Weigel has the most thankless job Ooh. in all of high school football right now in this state, trying trying to guard Grandy. I mean, he, he's been trying to jam him at the line, a good release and an open over the middle. I mean, these are pass patterns, obviously, that Grandy is, is running that take a long time to develop. And Hag Hagler's had that yeah. time. And that time that on that play was afforded by Colton Braun, who really did a good job of keeping John Whitmer away from Hagler who looks to throw again. This time he's under pressure. Widmer had him for a moment, and he'll fire across the middle incomplete. Both Widmer and Andrew Biney got some pressure on Hagler. But uh, Nolan Reeder, number 40, comes in and, and, and makes a real good block to allow the pass to even get off, because that time it actually looked like Hagler might be going down. You'll see coming from your right, number 40 takes Biney out mm. of the play and the ball noses down just a little bit. Second and 10 with 2.44 left in the half and a 24-22 lead for Napoleon Gackle Streeter. Little screen pass to Colton Braun. Braun's in the open field, inside the 30, inside the 20. Braun taken down, but not before he'll go to the 11-yard line. A 33-yard play, and Northstar is back in the hunt to regain the lead. Jared Rice gambles. Watch number 36 in the blue. He comes flying past the play. He tried to press it really hard and get there before the blocking could be set up. He missed it. Schwarzenberger goes in the backside of that, and he's just in save mode. Try to save the touchdown, and he did. Clock restarts. The Bearcats from the 11 yard line. Hagler under pressure, steps aside the rush. Now he may go down, and he does. Biney got him this time. Back at the 17 yard line. If the Bearcats get a timeout here, this time the second look here from Hagler doesn't open up. He's now he looks back to the middle of the field. It's not, oh, he can't quite pull the trigger. It's not there. Biney finishes it. Rad Wall, Rath Wall jumps into the air, too, to maybe take a potential play away out into the flat. And now a timeout by Northstar. First quarterback sack of the day by either team. But both defenses have been doing a lot of running, Ooh. haven't they? And it's always and more tiring to play and defense and than it, offense. It takes your toll, again, when you've got basically both teams playing a group of guys both ways. You get into a track meet in a building that's warmer than what you're used to playing, and you get into a track meet, and it, it's bound to take its toll. Yeah, a lot of coaches uh, that you talk with this week who are in this game, that's one of the things they talk about. You know, it's nice, it's comfortable. Yeah. We have, you know, <laughs> our jackets off, and so does everybody else. But for the players who are used to 40s and playing maybe down into the 30s, it's very warm. 
Second and 17 from the 18. Again, Biney puts pressure on Hagler, who's flushed out. Rolls way right, fires to the end zone. Is it picked off? No, nearly picked off by Schwarzenberger. And Grandy actually made a pretty good play to prevent that from being picked off here, LT. Yes, Daniel had to go from intended receiver to defensive back because Schwarzenberger was looked like the only guy that'd be able to have a, have a hand on it. And then he knocks it off or takes the ball away from Schwarzenberger. So Grandy did a good job yeah, with that left wow. arm to rip it out of there. He ripped it out, didn't he? Because Schwarzenberger actually came down with that football momentarily. It's third down. Now, the Bearcats can get a first down without scoring here, but they'd have to go inside the one-yard line as they lead 17 yards from the 18, and they'll swing it out to Brooks Larson, and Larson tackled by Rice on a minimal game. Yeah, Rice tried to come up on that screenplay and do what he, he missed then, what he wanted to do now, and that's, you know, you're out in space. If he doesn't make this tackle, you know, you're inside the 10 at least. Yeah. Timeout on the field. Unofficially, 286 yards for Napoleon Gackle Streeter, 282 yards for North Star. Now, LT, uh, you know South Dakota math well, of course, so add that up. And we have it. combined for uh, eight. I got to carry the uh, six. 568 yards here in the first half. And math teachers across the state of North Dakota who are watching because there's no school today. If I'm incorrect, <laughs> it's no surprise. There never was much of a math school. I was just going to say uh, the math teachers insisted in better than the math teachers in Lennox. Because uh, you not, did that faster than I could. Not when it came to this student. <laughs> You're giving. <laughs> Nearly 600 yards combined. How about that? <laughs> we can always estimate Got as it. Hagler throws to the end zone, and you never underestimate the talents of quarterback Jacob Hagler, who on that play finds Colton Braun for the touchdown, and the Bearcats regain the lead. Boy, Hagler's making some good decisions wow. with the football. He had uh, the guy, the defender was just on his back hip, and again, I'm just so impressed by where the ball goes from Hagler. I mean, he just put it out there, yeah. you know, where Braun had, the, he was the only guy who could catch it. His third touchdown catch of the year on a fourth and long play. Big play by Hagler. His third touchdown pass of the day. They lob it to Grandy, and that two-point conversion is tipped away by Steven Weigel. But North Star regains the lead here in the first half track meet with a minute 33 to play, 28-24 Bearcats. Hagler with three touchdown passes and a touchdown run here in the first half. And if you're thinking a minute 33 is not a lot of time, you might want to rethink that. One, because it's what Napoleon Gackle Streeter has had 122, 101, You're talking time of possession, scoring yeah. possessions here, yeah. And some of their, some of their possessions, so. I mean, Napoleon Gackle Streeter has been able to score quickly. Yeah, well, I, I don't think they're going to have the mindset of, oh, we're going to just field this kick, and then our offense no. is going on the field, and we're going to sit on the football. No. They, they won't have that mindset. Eight plays, 68 yards. It used two and a half minutes, and the 17-yard touchdown pass. Jacob Hagler to Colton Braun. Our Friday football festival is off to a very entertaining start here in this high-scoring nine-man championship game as the kick goes out of bounds on the far sidelines. And because of the scoring, so many scoring, so you have more kick up. I mean, this first half has taken, <laughs> as run time goes, yeah. it's taken a long time simply because both teams have been able to fly with that ball up and down the field. First down at the 35. The Imperials will have it at 35 after the penalty. <laughs> Rathwald, one of two receivers, along with Rice, to the far side of the field. Schwarzenberger 
Again, it's a good time to throw. Now he's feeling some pressure from behind him, but he'll run to the near sidelines and take it out to the 41 yard line. Looked like Schwarzenberger wanted his first play to be to the right. They, they were running a cr an X a little bit of a cross, fairly well covered. He looks back left and not much there either. So there, he can't throw to the X. And there's that instinct that says, hey, I've got a big guy chasing me. So you get what you can. And what he can was, you know, about six yards. Not bad, but when you're looking deep downfield, six isn't what you want. Minute 26 here as they snap the football. Look at the time again that Schwarzenberger has. Now he rolls out. He's telling Rice, I need a block downfield. And he got one. And he turns it up the far sideline. And Schwarzenberger will take it inside North Star territory to the 40-yard line. Boy, Daniel Grandy, I think, is... Um, is used to making this type of a tackle. So Grandy is, you know, he's been tackling well, his coach said. He's had a great year on defense, and here he just lets Schwarzenberger, or allows Schwarzenberger to get outside of him, and once he does, he scoots about, about another 15 yards or so. That's a 19-yard pickup. Heck, they still have 76 seconds left from the North Star 40-yard line. Schwarzenberger standing firm, and look at the time he has but that ball is under throwing. And now Rice was the nearest receiver he, at the 20, no, but I, right. I think he wanted to go for Rathwall for deep. Rath wall deep there, didn't he? Yeah, I think you're right. This ball just didn't quite come off his hand really well. It started to flutter a little bit. That allowed Rice to get a little bit closer to it. But at this stage, Rathwald is wide open yeah. straight up the field, but he can't get the ball there. 69 seconds to play in the half. Schwarzenberger to the far sideline. That ball is out of bounds. Caught, but Rice was out of bounds. But once again, the offensive line from Napoleon Gackle Streeter is doing a very good job giving Jonah Schwarzenberger a lot of time to survey the field. But with so many guys in the pattern, you can't really afford to gamble and blitz somebody no, either. No, you can't. You need all your linebackers into some pretty deep drops. Third and ten. Schwarzenberger this time with his legs. He's got a hole up the middle. He's got the first down and more. And Schwarzenberger will take it to the 29-yard line. Pickup of... Guess what, though? They, they did blitz that time. And the run went right past the blitzing linebacker. Braun blitzed. After the 11-yard gain, Schwarzenberger fires here to the 10-yard line, but that ball incomplete. Fedek looked like he was kind of going down before the ball got there, or he tripped up a little bit on his feet. Farmers Union Insurance replay. It'll be coming right at you. A little bit more inside coverage as well. Hope you're enjoying the Farmers Union Insurance replays. The gentlemen are shooting some fine pictures on the sidelines. Wade Fadness, Norm Bell, along with the rest of our entire crew here at the Fargo Dome. Spending a long day with their particular skills. Schwarzenberger looking, turns it up inside the 20, flag on the play, and this might come back. This might be a hold on John Widmer. Yeah, there, the there's perimeter. a hold. The, the flag sitting back at the 26, and remember in high school, too, the, it, it goes from the spot. Yep. So this play will not count. Schwarzenberger again made the right read. The sideline was open for him. Yeah. There's, you know, there's, there's another stub your toe moment for Napoleon Gackle Streeter LT when you're seemingly Holding in the position to put the points on the board. 10 yard penalty remains. Second down. No timeouts either for time Napoleon Gackle Streeter. Napoleon Gackle Streeter fumbled at the one yard line, also turned it over inside the 20. And now this penalty that backs him out to the 36. It's just off to your left. He didn't quite see where it came, but Northstar did use the timeout here with the 41 seconds left. Jacob Kauker standing by with the Nodak Mutual Insurance halftime report brought to you by Nodak Mutual Insurance, proud supporter of North Dakota Athletics. High school football today, and then we're back tomorrow along the North Dakota NBC Sports Network. Live coverage of NDSU against Youngstown State. Join us at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon as NDSU, with a win, can clinch a least a share of the Missouri Valley Conference Championship.
Yeah, there's, uh, there's an entire team. I don't know if they can all fit into the champion's room all, uh, all by themselves, <laughs> but there's an entire team that wants Bust their that picture door down. in there. Yep, and they'll get a chance to watch it and see if it happens. 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So Napoleon Gackel Streeter backed up to the 36-yard line after the penalty. They need a big play here if they want to put points on the board before the end of the half. Now Schwarzenberger comes in with some pressure. Three Bearcats chasing after him. He throws it up, and it's caught. Steven Weigel brings it down at the 10-yard line. Now, sometimes a Hail Mary doesn't have to be a scoring touchdown pass. That was a Hail Mary. Boy, Schwarzenberger does a great job. He's being mirrored right now by uh, number uh, 24. That is Braun. So as soon as he starts running, look at Braun close the gap. He gets hit, hit hard. The ball hangs up enough for wow. Weigel to make a play on it. And that's where Drew Schill just being 5'5", he couldn't do anything about it. Weigel goes six feet, Schill 5'5". After that big pickup, new life, Napoleon Gackle Streeter. 29 seconds left in the half. Schwarzenberger, he's got a man open. Fires to the end zone. It is Grandy. picked off. Oh, what a play. What a play by Daniel Grandy. Picked it off at the goal line. Fennig was the intended receiver. When Schwarzenberger released the ball, Fennig was open, but Grandy makes a great play on the interception here, LT. Boy, Grandy's able to close on this one. As you mentioned, Ham, the ball was in the air. He steals it away. Wow. Fennig tries to rip it back. He doesn't get it. Then Schwarzenberger has to try to, at this point, avoid a touchdown because Grandy had a pretty good head of steam. Whitmer uh, comes over to help make the tackle as well, but right at the doorstep again, the Imperials turned away by the Bearcats. Four first-half turnovers by Napoleon Gackle Streeter, three of them when they are in position to put points on the board. That's been the difference in this game. And with 18 seconds left in the lead, I would imagine that they'll run the football, and they do, as Colton Braun will carry out to the 35-yard line. And they called the timeout. Oh, oh. <laughs> how, how about that mentality? You're up 28-24. You've just turned the team over. You're at home 35 with 11 seconds left, and we're going to call a timeout. Well, there's no reason not to. I guess you don't get the – it doesn't carry over. Um, That's a good team, point. Your team is a big play team. Yeah. You've got why not when you've got Jacob <laughs> Hagler and Daniel Grandy? I guess why not, right? Holy cow! <laughs> this has been a wild game. Six hundred and fifty-eight combined yards here in the first half by these two football teams. We're headed to a thousand LT. Way that way, the way we're going. Well, in the first quarter, I think I think I declared us breaking the uh, scoring record too. Yeah. Well, let, let's see off this timeout if there just maybe were some dot the I's, cross the T things, or if this is maybe a, a play timeout to get the most out of the can with 11 seconds left. They throw it down the field, and he's open. And it's caught by Colton Braun, and Braun on the deep slant will take it to the 37-yard line. So now you put yourself in position to throw it to the end zone or and maybe get a score. Either go for it here. I, I would guess you would spike it to help set up the play. And in high school ball, they will make sure the chain is set. With six seconds left. Now, was that a spike or a, no, fumble? That was a that, fumble? That was a fumble. Hagler picked it up. It's a busted play. He'll throw it, and it's nearly picked up by Schwarzenberger. And that will bring us to the end of a frantic, high-scoring track meet here in the first half of the nine-man state championship game. Keep your eye on Jacob Hagler, who... May have been a little shaken up taking a hit on that final play of the first half. Uh, he's walking a little slow. That's yeah. Grandy uh, heading back in. But, yeah, Hagler's going a little slow there. Yeah. He's, he's talking a little bit there with Nolan Reeder. Nothing that uh, it appears at this stage that you would say is going to keep nope. him out of the second half. It's just that I wonder if teams brought oxygen tanks with wow. them. Wow. <laughs> they could use some. A wild and woolly first half with... North Star leading Napoleon Gackle Streeter 28 to 24. Here's Jacob Coucher. Here with North Star coach Brian Haugen. What a first half as far as offensive production. Maybe the difference, the opportunistic plays from your defense. Yeah, that, you know, they, 
the, I, I, I've said all week long we got to stop that quarterback, and Schwarzenberger's a heck of a quarterback, and he's making plays all over. And uh, we just stepped up, made some nice picks, had a fumble recovery, and you know, I, this is 680 yards of offense. This is incredible. This is a great game. Part of the reason for all that offense, Jacob Hagler, Daniel Grandy. Talk about that duo in the first half. Well, they're just incredible the way they communicate, and they're really getting things going right. Uh, it's just fun. I mean, it's like you can call a play, and they just they, they're, they're going to make it happen. But you know, I, I still think we got to get some running game established. We got to get the ball on the ground. We're starting to get it. We just we can't rely all on the pass. So I think we got to get back to that running game. All right. Thanks a lot for your time, Coach Dan. Lt. Back to you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. North Star leads Napoleon Gackle Streeter 28-24 in the nine-man state championship game here at the Dakota Bowl. And this is the Nodak Mutual Insurance Halftime Report brought to you by Nodak Mutual Insurance, proud supporter of North Dakota Athletics. With Lee Timmerman, I'm Dan Hammer. It's been an entertaining first half. And the two teams set the tone early. And the numbers are big, as you might expect. <laughs> and the stats are brought to you by the North Dakota Certified Seed Industry. And look at the numbers, LT. I mean, if you were playing a video game, you'd be you'd be <laughs> you'd be ecstatic to have anything remotely close to what has actually happened out on the field. 369 to 341 total yards. I mean, the 265 there uh, passing uh, from Grandy. I mean, or excuse me, from Hagler with most of those going to Grandy. 14 of 25. He has the three touchdown passes, and then Napoleon Gackle Streeter's rushing yards. Schwarzenberger with 146. Uh, rushing yards already, and the quarterback is averaging over 12 yards a run. 265 yards passing by Hagler in the first half. That That is 700 total yards right on the money, LT, combined in the first half. The tone was set early. North Star's opening possession. Their first play, they hit a 50-yard pass from the Hagler to Grandy, and then Hagler completes the scoring possession here. Yes, yeah, so it's a gorgeous pass here to end that long drive, about 14 yards for the touchdown. The two-point conversion made it 8 to nothing. And Schwarzenberger answers, 18-yard touchdown to Fedig to tie the game at eight. Schwarzenberger had the two, uh, the two run again, and then here's a one-yard touchdown. That's the, uh, that was the two-point conversion. Oh, the two-point, yep. yeah, we saw right. the two. Yeah, the touchdown was the run. That was a two-point conversion to Grandy. Here's Schwarzenberger on the six-yard touchdown run. That tied the game at 16 at the time. Yeah, both teams, uh, you know, doing a good job on two-point conversions. It's not a e real easy thing to do. Great pass. Yeah, Hagler, great pass to Grandy. Point after failed. It was 22-16 North Star at the time. Schwarzenberger added a two-yard touchdown run. Hagler, a 17-yard touchdown pass. That's where we stand. North Star 28, Napoleon Gackle Streeter 24. We're back with Napoleon Gackle, Streeter head coach Kelly McCleary. Coach McCleary, a lot of offense in that first half. How do you maybe finish out drives a little bit better in the second half? We got to communicate. I know two of those were miscommunication plays on our turnovers. And I mean, the first one we turned the wrong way in a handoff, and the second one, I mean, our receiver thought we had the slants and we were going outside, and just a mix up with those two. And I mean, we're just we're executing on offense until we get in the red zone, and we're just I mean, we got to finish drives, and we're getting them in fourth and long, and they're I mean, they're killing us on them. So I mean, he's. We definitely got to shut him down on defense, and I mean, we're just got to finish, I guess. All right, finishing the key for the Imperials in the second half. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Guys? Hey, thanks, Jacob. Jacob Kalker roaming the sidelines all day today here at Dakota Bowl 2011. Kelly McCleary, the head coach of the Imperials, who will receive the football here to begin the second half. Well, Kelly's right about those fourth downs. Yeah. I mean, not only they weren't, you know, fourth and, you know, inches either these no. were fourth and longs and in all three fourth down situations the Bearcats came through with the first down in the first half four first half turnovers by Napoleon Gackle Streeter one turnover by North Star in that first half isn't it amazing on how many numbers with the 700 you know total <laughs> yards there's 37 first downs <laughs> but football always comes down I, I almost turnovers. always comes down to turnovers turnovers off the kickoff, and it will go out of bounds on the far sidelines. The benefit of the Imperials winning the coin toss, electing to take the ball, obviously, or deferring, and then you get yep. the ball in the second half. Out of bounds on the kicking team. Ball placed first and 10 at so the 35. So the Imperials will go to work from the 35-yard line. As you mentioned, Jonah Schwarzenberger, 
12 rushing attempts in the first half for the quarterback, 146 yards. That's an average of a little better than 12 yards per carry for the young man right there. He also threw for 160 yards, so he's accounted for a bunch, and he looks to throw on first down here. Flushed out, rolls to his right, to the sideline to Rice. He caught it at the 46. He's inside Bearcat territory, and he'll turn his way to the Bearcats 42. Well, if you've watched Rice at all, you'll see that uh, this is the way he likes to finish a play. He's not a run out of bounds uh, type of kid. Schwartzenberger finds Rice wide open, and at the end of this, watch Jared. He will square up, yeah. put his helmet right in the chest of the tackler, and take him on. Mano a mano right there for a couple extra yards for Jared Rice, who is again a receiver in this set, but Schwartzenberger adds to his rushing stats inside the 30. He angles to his left. He may take it. He's at the 15. He cuts in and finally tackled, but not before he gets to the six-yard line. That's 36 more yards for Schwarzenberger, who is approaching 200 yards rushing. Boy, there is a couple of great blocks. You'll see white jerseys on the field all over the place because of some excellent blocks. One here at the end by Fedek takes care of Schill, and that's what allowed Schwarzenberger to get all the way down to the seventh. First and goal for the Imperials. Let's see if they can finish here as the coach said, and as we've talked about, they've been their worst enemy in this part of the field. Threatening here in the first possession of the second half to take the lead. Rice cuts it in. He's in. Touchdown, Napoleon Gackle Streeter, Jared Rice. His first touchdown of the day. And it didn't take long, did it, LT? <laughs> less, than a, less than a minute. 56 <laughs> seconds is what it took, actually, for Rice to play off a nice block. You saw Grandy got turned a little bit. Rice was able to square up and, and, and take that one in. And on the ground, the Imperials getting it done. The two-point conversion as Schwarzenberger has three linemen and five receivers, baby. Let's spread the field to see what we can find. And they'll hand it off to Weigel. Uh-uh, nothing going. Well defended and was Grandy, the first man there for the Bearcats. But despite holding on the two-point conversion, Napoleon Gackle Streeter regains the lead in the opening minute of the second half, 30 to 28. Yeah, play obviously designed to get around the outside or off the edge. Well, number five, Grandy just closes that one. There's no chance at all for Weigel to try to get outside and maybe pick up a block from somebody out there. And uh, the help is coming from the inside, so the two-point no good. Schwarzenberger with that 36-yard run is up to 182 yards rushing on the afternoon. Three plays, 65 yards, and it used less than a minute. What was that cumulative uh, number for the most points scored? 70. Well, that's that's falling for sure. <laughs> that, 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 may fall, that may fall by the middle of the third quarter. Off the kickoff, right down the middle of the field, a high bouncing football, tough to handle, but Grandy does secure it. And he'll churn his way. <laughs> churn his way with about six blue jerseys on his back out to the 37. I tell you, this game has had so many points in it where, where really all you can do is just as, as you, you did right there, Dan, just kind of giggle and enjoy it. Uh, Grandy again kind of gets in a big mess here. We've seen Napoleon on these kickoffs, and, you know, really do a good job of gang tackling. North Star's first opportunity of the second half. And up the middle they come. Now that ball was down, I think. They're trying, they meaning the, the Imperial fans, trying to say that it popped out. But uh, no, Braun was down. Took it out to the 44 yard line. And not surprised at all either here to see Coach Haugen you know, he talked about knowing we can't just rely only on balls in the right. air. I mean, you just, if nothing else, you give your defense a little break yeah. to try to keep and grind it a little bit more on the offense. Well, again, and their personality offensively this year has been one of the pass and the run blended well. Between Braun and Sager, they've rushed for more than 1,500 yards. Grant, uh, Hagler on the run himself here trying to 
avoid the rush. They got a great block at the end of the play, and they're finally going to bring him down. He ran out of running room as Rath Wald tackled him at the line of scrimmage at the 44. He was just happy to catch back up to him. Yeah. Hagler made a great big move here. All his receivers are to the right. Well, Hagler comes back to the left, but there's nobody he has a chance to even throw it to over there. Circles back to the right, hoping he could get there. Rathwald missed him once, and with the help of Rice, didn't miss him again. And you know what that play means, LT? Just more miles being Running. put on by these 18 young men who are out here. I mean, these guys are piling up the miles just running the field on every play. Yeah, you talk about a track meet. Well, they're sprinting more today than anyone <laughs> would sprint at a track meet. Third down and four. Hagler throws it out to the open receiver, but he dropped the football. Colton Braun had it at about the 42-yard line, and it falls incomplete. Breidenbach had the coverage for the Imperials. Well, he laid it out there pretty soft, then. It just kind of drops right down in there, but Braun is unable to, to hold on to it. Oh, had it, bobbled it, dropped it. I know Hagler, um, I read in one of the quotes in, in one of the papers saying, hey, it makes me mad when people, when I hear people say, we're just a basketball school. Well, he's an outstanding point guard, but we're seeing today he's an outstanding quarterback. The punt angled toward the near sideline will be down at the 24-yard line. Again, uh, mission accomplished as they don't want to give Rice the opportunity just to field the punt and run. So big swing here for Napoleon Gackle Streeter as the Imperials score on their first possession of the third quarter and then come out and stop North Star on its first possession. And we haven't had more than a one possession lead by either team. Well, other than eight to nothing right off the bat, that's obviously right. the biggest. Then, then it's what, four, I think, points is the biggest swing that's been 22 in this 16 game. at one point. Oh, okay. Schwarzenberger. Throws it across the middle. It's complete to Rathwold, and he'll take it out to the 33-yard line. Took up a eight, maybe nine on the play. That pass may have been tipped a little bit, but it still ended up getting to the guy he wanted. We'll see here on the Farmers Union Insurance replay. Schwarzenberger has to move a little bit, but stays in the pocket. Nope, not tipped, but Rathwald is able to make the catch in a gain of eight. Four receivers once again for the Imperials. Schwarzenberger keeps it up the middle, he goes. And Schwarzenberger will take it out to the 47 yard line. That's 15 yards for Schwarzenberger. And that puts him uh, at 197 on the afternoon. The key there is you saw Murchie come up into the hole, then he was engaged, and that allowed the, the middle of the field to open up because he's the middle linebacker. And then Schwarzenberger is able to gain the first down relatively easily. From their own 47, low snap. We've seen more than several today, but again, look at the time Schwarzenberger has to throw. Oh, that ball nearly picked off. Nearest man there was Sager. Ethan Sager for North Star. Kind of zoning the under, it looked like. That's what North Star was doing there, just trying to take away. Uh, and Weigel tried to, I think it was Weigel tried to hop right inside and, and beat that zone, but the but the ball didn't get there. Breidenbach in the backfield with Schwarzenberger. He'll be the lead blocker here, but that play is blown up by Murchie. Big Sean Murchie was there to meet Schwarzenberger and drop him for no gain on the play. Well, it worked the time before. It certainly did not work this time. Breidenbach was unable to make Murchie uh, you know, commit within the hole and let his quarterback read off of that. And then he puts him down with a little extra authority. Yes. Physical game. Third and long. Third and ten, in fact, for the Imperials from their own 47-yard line. Their second possession of this second half. The familiar set. Two receivers. He's out of the field. And Murchie's got him again. And sacks him back at the 35-yard line. Sean Murchie with two consecutive big-time defensive plays for the Bearcats. Boy, Murchie doesn't even need both arms to tackle here. He gets his right paw out there and kind of throws him Whoa. down. <laughs> just, just gets a part of that jersey. 
And Schwarzenberger, who has been tough to sack today, but goes down for a big loss. Trent Fennig will punt it away. It hits at the 31, and Grandy will let it bounce by him, and this will end up pretty good for Napoleon Gackle Streeter back at the 16-yard line, third quarter here at the Nine-Man Championship game. It's a track meet. Dakota Bowl 2011. Welcome back to the vet uh, to the Fargo Dome, and North Star has it first and ten from their own 16. Stanley, Powers Lake, and Linton HMB. The next game up, the Class A Championship game, and look at them rumbling out to the 34-yard line. That is Colton Braun taking uh, Breidenbach for a little ride. Well, I know Coach Haugen said that as the tailback, people think that their guy right there, number 24, is an outside runner. But this year, he's been more effective inside doing just like that. That was a very physical run, and uh, he's a very fast kid. So if he was able to pop this or, you know, get out of the, the grasp, he might have been able to go all the way. Schwarzenberger slows him down a little bit. Breidenbach comes in there and helps finish things off. Made the most of it after breaking the tackle of Schwarzenberger, though. Now they throw to Grandy, but that ball overthrown just by uh, about the length of a hand or two just inside Imperial territory, incomplete. Nice pass pattern, though we really kind of faked and planted to the inside. That's what allows you to gain a little bit of separation from, in this case, Weigel trying to, to guard him on the outside. 6.23 remaining here in the third quarter. Grandy and Sager, the receivers to the far side of the field. Hagler across the middle, and that ball caught at the 40, but immediately leveled to the field by Trent Fettig was Daniel Grandy. He's cramping up, too, yeah, I think, is. on his... Yeah, he's holding that left calf. Down the left calf. But as much running as these guys have done in this game already, and again, remember, most guys play both sides of the ball, and really Fedek just not allowing the legs to even get to the turf to have a chance to run this again, or to, to move it after the catch. Good timing. Great timing. Excellent catch. Fedek, just a sophomore, 5'9", 175. There's the... Trying to work out that cramp. Good look Third at Trent. A lot of good athletes with the last name Fedek came have been through Napoleon in recent years. So staring at a third down and four without one of their top offensive playmakers on the field, North Star will call the timeout. I think that last part of your statements may be the biggest reason the timeout was made because you don't have you don't have Grandy. Buy a little time here and hope to get him. And he can't, and he, he can't would not be, anyway. he would not be allowed back. No. Well, no, they didn't stop play for him. So, no, he would have been able to come back in because they didn't stop the play. That's true. And now he'll, he's I on his feet. he'll come back in. Yeah. Nope, he's going to watch it. Here in Dahl, number 32 in at the running back position. Shill, it looks like, is in at that wideout spot now. Yep. Bruce Schill, one of two receivers to the far side of the field. Movement. Movement along the line of scrimmage. Yep, number 22. A little movement in the yep. slot. That was Sager. That'll turn a third and four into a third and nine for North Star. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. Ball just shy of the 35-yard line. But a different look now coming out on third and nine. This split backs with Hagler. Yeah, and Grandy back in at the, the high side of the field. He looks Grandy's way, lobs it up toward him on the far sideline and overthrows him just a bit. Weigel had coverage with Grandy there at the 50-yard line. So it's fourth down, and North Star will punt it away. 
Weigel takes away the initial out. The good, remember I talked about the good hard yep. plant and then going back to the outside. Well, Weigel's positioning forced Grandy to have to alter his route and that through that, the, the chance of that play being completed uh, it, it took it way down. Fettig and Rice await the punt from Grandy. Whoa, it's a high, short punt that lands at the 45, takes an imperial bounce, and they're gonna have a great field position at the 49-yard line with 524 left third quarter. The Imperials lead 30-28. Jonas Schwarzenberger, 191 yards passing and 185 <laughs> yards rushing. What Makes a huge giggle again. day. Yep. <laughs> he avoids the rush, buys himself for more time, throws across the middle, complete. And that is Rathwold will take it to the 40 yard line. 11 yards on the completion and a first down for the Imperials. Well, he caught that, what, about five yards short of the first down, turned around, got his shoulders squared up, and then, uh, you know, hustled up to that first down marker. Schwarzenberger's been so good at moving in the pocket, and, and even though that, uh, you know, was it Murchies has got him a couple of times yep. the last time, but he's been tough to bring down, and he's been patient in inside, in the pocket. Looking to throw, steps to his left. Now looks back across the middle of the field and complete. Put it on the money to Steven Weigel. He's inside the 25 and Weigel tackled at the 20 yard line by Brooks Larson, but that's 20 more yards for the Imperials. And the reason is because he had about 10 seconds to wait for somebody to he get open. Uh, excellent blocking up front. You're seeing Travis Blake pick, have to pick himself up off the turf. And then Schwarzenberger is, you know, you know puts it you see that so many times the ball gets to the receiver just as the defender misses it by less than a foot I mean with the time he's had to throw today it just puts North Star's defense in a really vulnerable position big hole up the middle Schwarzenberger takes it inside the 10 and it's first and goal for the Imperials as the dual threat quarterback takes it to the seven yard line 13 yards rushing on that play. The key to what has made this play either work or not work is the initial block that Breidenbach has on Murchie. If it's a good block, Schwarzenberger's been able to gain a bunch of yards. If it's not, Murchie's been in there to, to close it down. That has been the key. 23, blocking 47. Napoleon Gackel Street are threatening now to create the first two lead of the game by either team as that pass was knocked down. Stephen Hunt, I think, is the one who got his hand on that, a junior. Number 56, goes about 255. Clock stops with 357 left in the third quarter. It was 28-24, North Star at the half. Napoleon Gackel Streeter scored on its first possession of the third quarter to take the lead. Now they look to add more to it. On second and goal from the seven, three receivers bunched to the far side of the field. They spread it out for Schwarzenberger, thought about running it. Now he looks to the end zone. That ball is caught. Touchdown, Trent Fettig. And the Imperials increase their lead to 36-28. Sure seemed like this was a running play at the get-go, wasn't it? It sure seemed like it. And then Northstar takes him out. He gets the hand back in a passing position. Fedek is open and it spirals right to him. And where does it go? Just within a foot of a defender into the intended receiver. Well, this is coming back, LT. We have a penalty laying at the five yard line. Motion on the offense, two guy, oh. five yard penalty. Two, two guys moving. Two, and it may have been created by that bunch set that we saw on the top of, on the far side of the field on that play as they had three men bunched and they had another in motion. I, are whistled for the penalty, so the touchdown wiped off the board, and you're pushed back to the 12-yard line, second and goal from the 12. Schwarzenberger rolls out to his left, looks back right. Ad living at the play, Breidenbach is open, and he's got it to him at the five, and muscled out of bounds just inside the five-yard line by Sager. But what a potential, uh, you know, big opportunity here for the North Star defense to take advantage of that penalty yeah. that takes a touchdown off the board. 
and then Schwarzenberger just keeps running. And you mentioned Breidenbach has been doing some blocking, slips out there, tries to slip into the end zone, but not quite, but knocking on the door again. They're marking at the three, third and goal. Rice will carry, touchdown the Napoleon Gatto Streeter. Jared Rice is in for the score. He's got both Imperial touchdowns here in the second half, and it's a 36-28 lead. Boy, Rice just does not even get touched at all until he hits maybe, you know, get a fingertip at the goal line. So a great job again up front by the Imperial. Running behind Widmer's side, Rathwald in there doing some blocking. Schumacher is the, is the center. 15th touchdown overall in the season for Jared Rice. Two-point conversion now. Rice will try to add to it. Nope, nothing going there. Well, de well defended by North Star. That's Larson right there. Tried to counter. Tried to show a little. Uh, tried to show motion to the left and try to sneak Rice back to the left. Our motion to the right. Now here's the counter. And number 90, Hayden Larson. Big Hayden, 6'1", yep. 255, senior. Well, that, that stop on the two-point conversion, you know, keeps this possibly a one-possession game, eight-point advantage rather than a ten-point advantage for Napoleon Gackle Streeter. It covered 51 yards, took a minute and 50 seconds and six plays. On the Jared Rice touchdown run. Short field, 51-yard field. That's right. Napoleon Gackle Streeter has gone over 500 yards offense here with three and a half left to play yet in the third quarter. <laughs> How many times have we just done that already today? <laughs> I don't have anything to say. I'm just going to giggle because of the way this, this game has gone. Uh, most total net yards, 543. That well, that's getting that'll close. be shattered. And that was from the Richland team that we talked about. That little squib kick is going to give North Star really good field position at its 47-yard line. There's Hagler's numbers, 15 to 29, 270 yards and three touchdowns. Most passing yards, three, he's, he's got a ways to go yet, 356. Uh, North back in 2000. Okay. I think that was the game where Horn just went nuts catching the ball. Yeah, Tim Horn had five touchdowns in that game. Screenplay. They set it up for Colton Braun. He's got blockers. Braun in the open field at the 30. Braun at the 20. Two men to beat, and it's Schwarzenberger who will tackle Braun at the 17 yard line. Schwarzenberger's going to get up slow because he was pounded pretty hard on a real good block Ooh. at the 30. He's been the main offensive man for the Imperials, limping a little bit here. Great call on the screen, works real well. Braun gets the ball and he's got space. Watch uh, the, the big guy here right out in front. He knocks Schwarzenberger out of it and then Schwarzenberger kind of rolls an ankle a little bit trying to get back in on that tackle. I think that was Stephen, Stephen Hunt. Hunt. Yeah, yeah, that made the block. Yeah, great downfield blocking by the 255 pound center for North Star. And there's Schwarzenberger limping off, favoring that right leg. Such an asset to this football team. Been a one-man wrecking crew offensively today for the Imperials. Up the middle. Big, big hole for Ethan Sager, and Sager will take it to the four. That's a chunk of 12 more, and it's first and goal for Northstar, who's looking to answer quickly now after the Imperials had opened up a 36-28 lead. Boy, that was a real good <laughs> uh, hole. Just simply because the guy right in the middle of the play got his shoulders turned. I mean, the guy playing defense, he was turned, pushed out of the way, and, uh, and Sager with the nice run. Clock runs, 252 and counting here in the third quarter. We're in the Fargo Dome, the 2011 Dakota Bowl. This is the nine-man championship, Class A championship to follow. Flags come in on the play. And this will back North Star up.
Dead ball, false start on the offense, five yard penalty. Repeat, first down. Just want more space to run another pass play, huh? <laughs> No, not really. That's the mentality. Yep. Heck, when you're taking timeouts with 11 seconds left in the half uh, and leading like North Star did, what the heck, huh? Two receivers to the near side of the field. Grandy and Schill. Hagler on the move again. Fires across the middle of the end zone, and it's caught. That's Drew Schill. Touchdown, North Star. And Jacob Hagler has yet to get up. He is he's, he's down at the 22-yard line. Yeah, Biney was coming from behind, so as the ball goes and we follow the ball and Schilt catches it, I think it was Biney that got a hit in up on, uh, up on Hagler. So both quarterbacks in the, what, the span of just a couple of plays here are looking at... Um, cramped up I think if you, if you saw his calf boy that thing looked tight you can just feel that pain yeah. right there can't you when you see that image I mean, but you, go you back see to him the, cringing you can just feel that but you go back to the first half and as much running and running yeah. and running and both ways that these two get that these two teams play guys both ways you you can't get enough water or whatever or you know into you you, you think there's some concerned folks over there uh, on the North Star side of the field and up around, you know, that region that makes up North Star because you're looking at, you know, the best athlete in the school system, one of the best, not only just in football, but, of course, we've got basketball season yep. right around the corner, and he's one of the main key pieces in the team going into the season as the defending Class B state champions. The, the good thing, though, is that they're holding the – the Cat. muscle and not one of the joints, yeah. either the knee above it or the ankle below it. Really getting a massage on that right calf muscle. But the Bearcats have pulled within a two-point conversion now of tying the game on the touchdown pass from Hagler, his fourth touchdown pass of the afternoon. Yeah, you might think and, and go, well, can you give these kids maybe a break on defense? Well, no, not really. not really. They're your best defensive players, too. Pretty ginger going off. J.D., John Darling, the tending trainer. Now, who plays quarterback for well, the two point? We, we will see. It, may, it, it could be Grandy. You know, you can take a look at who are your two best athletes on the field. It's Hagler and Grandy. Yeah, so it's Grandy. It will be Daniel Grandy at the quarterback position. Alex Weston is the receiver on the far side of the field. He's a big, tall guy, 6'5", but they'll run Grandy up the middle, and he turns in. He was met by Rathwold at the two-yard line, but Grandy's in for the two-point conversion. And with 2.20 left in the third quarter, we are tied <laughs> at 36. Boy, good job on the power move there when Rathwald, what, two yards out or so, has, yeah. has his pads in a pretty good spot, but Grandy's able to muscle through it. And he's had cramps, uh, you know, yeah. in his calves today, too. That's an important answer for North Star. on the short field from the, yeah, the the kickoff that didn't go very far. Very short field. It's like Jacob Hagler still getting work done over there on the uh, North Star bench, North Star sideline. A 53-yard scoring drive after they took possession at their own 47-yard line. Took just three plays and the touchdown pass, Hagler's fourth of the day, first to Schill. Uh, we broke the record, too, by the way. Most points ever scored in the Dakota Bowl game. Right, there you go. We're at uh, 72 now. Rice will field the kickoff at the 11-yard line. Angling to his left and tackled shy of the 20-yard line by Schill. Yeah, Breidenbach was trying to get a block right at about the 30, and he just couldn't afford, uh, you know, the, the hit in the back as we see Schwarzenberger come back. So he had to pull off of that block, and uh, the run ended right about there. The 
not surprised to see Schwarzenberger come back. The, you know, just from the look, we won't be surprised when when Hagler comes nope. back either. But Hagler not on the field in this defensive yep. set. Alex yep. Weston, the freshman who wears number 12, is. And here's Schwarzenberger rolling out to his right, looking across the middle again, wide open at the 40-yard line is Trent Fedig, and he'll take it to the 44, 15 yards on that conversion. Good hit here from Grandy. Now, Fedig had a pretty good hit, too, the last time, helping Grandy up. This time, it's the reverse, the other way around. Fedig will make the catch. You'll see number five come here and put a pretty good pop Ooh. on him. Good and tackle. Now, yep, real good tackle, and Fedig came to the sidelines after that. So now Bits goes into the slot on the high side. Schwarzenberger this time under pressure. Can he deke away from Ethan Sager? Yes, and he finds Rice at the 46. And by the time Rice is tackled by Josh Haugen, he takes it to the 48-yard line. Pick up a four on the play. Boy, what a nightmare for who's ever trying to call defenses Oof. today. Trying to get your team in the right spot at the right time. Wow. But hey, he's Pretty in the right spot. He, he just is. can't, he, he, you know, a little sidestep that allows the pass to be made. You nice know, little then. move by Schwarzenberger to get away from Sager. Second down and five from the 49, and Schwarzenberger got hit right around the hip area. Yeah, Blake. Yeah, that and was Travis. Game. Travis Blake makes the defensive play there. Goes about 280. He's a he's a senior, 6'3". Schwarzenberger has had so much success up the middle. Ooh, right there. Kind of took his hip away. Now the North Star fans are on their feet as they're urging their defense on third and five for Napoleon Gackel Streeter. Lobbed across the middle and brought in by Rathwold in a first down at the Bearcat 45-yard line. Well, the Bearcats were coming and coming pretty hard. Here comes Murchie again up the middle, so that leaves the middle open, and Rathwald fills that zone, jumps over the umpire, and makes the catch. Well, the middle of the field has been has been a feast today yeah. in the Napoleon Gackle Streeter passing game. And running, too. A, yeah, lot, of, running. a lot of Schwarzenberger's runs. Hagler They're, looks pretty good walking yeah. along the sideline. Schwarzenberger rolls out to his left. Two defenders on him, but he throws it up, and it's caught. Steven Weigel comes down with the reception, and Weigel will take it to the 28-yard line before Grandy bounces him out of bounds on the far sideline. Looked like man-to-man -man defense right there. They ran a deep crossing pattern, and Grandy had to give up to not get hit or hit his own guy when the two uh, wide receivers crossed. That allowed the space. The space allows the completion. And if you're those North Star defenders, you're frustrated because you're within a step or an arm length of trying to corral number 11, who sensed at that time and got the ball off just in time. New set of downs from the Bearcats 28. Last play of the third quarter as Schwarzenberger looks across the middle, plenty of time. Steps up, fires the ball to a wide open Jared Rice. Touchdown, Napoleon Gackle Streeter. Schwarzenberger again with time, making adjustments in the pocket, giving himself time to complete the touchdown pass to Rice on the final play of the third quarter. Boy, again, Schwarzenberger, look at his eyes. They're just downfield. He keeps, he, he senses the pressure, feels a little bit of it, moves away and then he'll slide through that pressure. Rice gets open finally because you can't guard a guy again for 10 seconds, and then Rice backs into the end zone. These teams just continue to trade scores at a frantic pace in the highest scoring game in the history of the Dakota Bowl, and the two-point two -point conversion on the money to Weigel. End of three quarters here in a shootout to the nine-man championship game, Napoleon Gackle Streeter, 44, North Star, 36. Welcome back to the Fargo Dome. If you love offense, you're loving this nine-man championship game. The two teams have now combined for more than 1,000 yards on the Fargo Dome turf, and heck, we still have 12 minutes to play, LT. But I don't see a record for most combined yards but if there was I'm sure that was broke as well as Napoleon 
has the most yards of any game in the third in three quarters. Drew Schill trying to run away from the Imperial special team coverage, but he's tackled on the near sideline by Trent Fettig. But the Bearcats will have it at their own 39-yard line. Here's the return again on the Farmers Union Insurance replay. Starts off on the left side. Schill's waiting for little blocks, and here he comes near side, almost straight down the 30 and then is able to spin the edge and get close to the 40. Jacob Hagler back on the field for North Star after getting that right calf tended to. Eye formation. Braun is the tailback. Carries left side. Nothing going. John Widmer corrals him for a gain of only two yards. Yeah, Hagler does not have his right calf all the way loosened up again. After that, he reached down to try to give it another little bit of a stretch. But he right now uh, is, what, 39 passing yards away Hagler is from setting a record for most passing yards. Unofficially, anyway, at least the number we have right now for Hagler is 317 yeah. passing yards. Two receivers to the near side of the field. They're going to run Colton Braun and Braun gets to the 43 but no more as Biney makes the tackle for the Imperials. Yeah he is so important running his nose guard to position the junior Biney. We've seen him with really good you know side to side movement along the line of scrimmage and that's that's what you need to have here in this nine man game side to side. You don't have that extra help along the defensive line. 10 45 and counting maybe first to 50 wins today LT. 55, did you say? <laughs> <laughs> Big play for the Bearcats, third and six. Hagler across the middle, Grandy's got it, the first down and more. He'll spin inside Imperials territory to the 45-yard line. Breidenbach, one of a couple of Imperial defenders there to make the tackle. The spin is what really kind of makes it because Schwarzenberger is lining him up. Here comes Grandy, Schwarzenberger's lining him up, trying to go for the hit, maybe to separate the ball. And Grandy's able to spin away from that and get that first. Well, Grandy himself, uh, we don't have his updated stats, but he seemingly would be on pace to set a single-game yardage receiving record. He had 157 in the first half anyway. We'll try to get updated numbers for you on that as Sager carries, and Sager <laughs> takes it to the 36. He had bodies flying high and low by the Imperials who make the tackle. Just update you on that, uh, Dan. Jason Moore from Dickinson. Yeah. Had 234 yards well, receiving. Grandy uh, is going to break how, that today too. Guess how many passes Moore caught? Four. Five. Five. Yeah. Five for 234. It's not a bad day. Not bad at all. Now this is obviously a record-setting day, and by that first quarter, we're not surprised. Here's Braun. He's got the first down. He needed to get to the 30, just inside the 35, and he'll take it to the 34, and that'll move it's the It's going to be closer than oh, yeah, I think. It is. I, initially, I thought he had the 34 secured, but now it's inside the 35, but not quite to the 34. And we're going to measure here. Yeah, Rathwald is holding on to the jersey, and the Braun trying to stretch it as far as he can. Class A championship game coming up at about noon today. It's Linton HMB against Stanley Powers Lake. About 3 o'clock this afternoon, the double A championship. Two-time defending state champion Shanley against undefeated and top ranked Grafton. And tonight, triple A championship, 6.30 Bismarck High against Bismarck Century. Wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the 2011 Dakota Bowl. Noon is uh, not going to work. <laughs> it's 11.31 right now. Wow. We still have nine and a half to play in this shootout. And a half hour between games. They put 20 They put twenty on the clock after yeah. the awards. Probably going to be more like one, maybe a one and four for the afternoon games. Hagler, he's got his man, and it's Schill, and that will be a first down as Schill got to the 26-yard line to pick up a nine on the play. Yeah, just no one close to him in that slot receiver position off to the high side because Grandy's off to his left. Just an easy read and a relatively easy throw. 
But then again, if you come off of Grandy, even though it's third and short, you chuck it long yep. there you <laughs> to go. Daniel and off you're off to the races again. So yeah, good luck, defenses. <laughs> Under nine minutes. Two receivers to the far side of the field. This will be Braun, and Braun angles his way to the 21 for a pickup of five. Breidenbach was there, so was Rath Wald for Napoleon Gackle Streeter to the 21. If I did not say that. I think I may have said the 24. Well, I think everyone associated with this with this game, whether you're playing or watching it in the stands, yeah. I think people are tired. <laughs> There's been so yeah. much yelling, yeah. so much screaming, so many things to get excited about. It's, you know, people are wearing down. It's been an entertaining yet draining game probably for everybody involved. Second down and five from the 21. Hagler throws it in and out of the hands of Schill at the 13-yard line. Schill will be able to get the hand out, but not the other hand near the ball to pull it back in. He had one on it, but couldn't quite corral it. Now the third down here for North Star. Grandy and Braun. The receiver package, they'll run it up the middle with Sager, and Sager will be stopped short of the first down. Schwarzenberger was there for Napoleon Gackle Streeter, so was Corey Koenig. So the ball resting just inside the 19 yard line. It'll be fourth down and three. Pivotal play here in the fourth quarter. North Star driving, but trailing 44 36. And Napoleon Gackle Streeter wants to talk about it. Napoleon. This is the nine-man championship game. You're watching it on North Dakota NBC Sports. It's time for the Farmers Union Insurance Fan Cam. Farmers Union Insurance, premier partner of the North Dakota High School Activities Association. Small towns who travel well. Very nice crowd on each side of the field here, supporting their respective teams in this nine-man championship. On fourth down and two, and this will be Daniel Grandy lined up as quarterback as Hagler was a receiver on the near side of the field, and he'll take it very near I think he got the it. first down sticks. They may take well, a look and measure this again, LT. This it is. Yeah. First down. Yep, first down, so. He needed three, and he got three and one inch. <laughs> and it's a new set of downs for the Bearcats, who... With 7.25 and counting here in the fourth quarter in this championship game. Trail by eight. Hagler returns his quarterback now in the new set of downs. And he'll throw the fade to the end zone for Grandy. Did he get it inbounds? I didn't think so. Well, the two officials are looking at each other. One looking to make a call and one does and says touchdown. It took them a second as they looked at each other there, the officials LT, in the near corner of the end zone, and they say touchdown. So the guy in the back was not in a position to make the, the call at all. One foot needs to be down. What a beautifully thrown football Gorgeous. by Hagler. Wow, right on the money. Oh, he was out. He was out of bounds, and you may hear the boos from the Napoleon Gackle Streeter sideline because as you enjoy the replays at home, the fans here also get a chance to see the replays on the big screen. No replay in high school football. The halfback pass attempt on the two-point conversion. That ball knocked down Here before it can reach the intended receiver. 7.06 to play in the title game. It's Napoleon Gackle Streeter nursing a two-point lead. LT, I think this replay is pretty conclusive that Daniel Grandy is not in bounds. He secures the football there. There's his first step. Yep. Looks to be out that, of bounds. That was my first read. Secures the ball, one step yep. out. Definitely on the line. So 
Northstar gets the touchdown to get within 44-42, despite replay evidence showing otherwise. But be because of that, it was almost fitting that the two-point conversion was incomplete and the game's not tied, so at least Napoleon still has a lead. You know what I mean? <laughs> after that, ex after an exchange like that, that's not to say that Northstar doesn't score again on the next play, right. but the Imperials still have the lead. 6.57 to play in this championship game, and the, the tone was set early when these two teams combined for 32 points in the first quarter, and they haven't stopped scoring here in the highest single scoring game in the history of the Dakota Bowl and Schwarzenberger's on the move again. He's over 200 yards rushing now in the day as he'll take it out to the 36 after the game of seven. Well, not just the scoring though too, Dan. We you know, talk about the yards uh, and, you know, Napoleon Gackle Streeter has, you know, took care of Norse most, or the most yards in the game and North Star's dangerously close to doing the same thing. So both teams <laughs> are are maybe going to break the record for most net yards. What a shootout. Here's the handoff to Rice. Angles to his right, and he'll take it just across the 40-yard line. That'll be good enough for a first down for the Imperials as Josh Haugen made the tackle. I think Napoleon would like to be able to do a little grinding yeah, here. No doubt, if, you, six if they could. 6-10 is a lot of time, especially the way these two offenses have moved on the opposing defenses. So I mean, the mindset right here for, for the Imperials has got to be, let's see if we can grind it out, move the sticks, and make the clock our best friend here in trying to win a state championship. Yeah, because we have the ball and we have the lead. Schwarzenberger has Rice out in front of him blocking, and Schwarzenberger will spin off a would-be tackler across the 45-yard line. He got five out of it. Murchie trailing the play helps get in the play, but not before. So there's just some great blocks going on. Oh. I mean, when you look at the interior of the line yeah. on, on both sides, here Napoleon has the ball, so the Imperials are, are, are putting white jerseys on the turf, same as the other way around. I mean, these offensive lines are doing an outstanding job today. Jared Schumacher, the center for Napoleon Gackle Streeter, Biney, Widmer. Those boys are doing a big time job up front today as Rice will carry, but this time not so much. And he's met by Travis Blake. Oh, well, that's a big bruiser in the middle of that defensive line for North Star. No gain on the play. Yeah, Blake is in there to help finish it, but I think Grandy kind of threw the play off right off the middle. He came hard around the edge on the top side got in there to disrupt it a bit. Well, here's another big third down play in this fourth quarter. As the Imperials need three yards. They need to get to midfield to retain possession here. Nursing a two-point lead and four and a half to play in the nine-man state championship game. Rice will carry behind Biney. Biney made a good block and that frees Rice enough to the 47-yard line for the first down. Well, you get behind your best moving blocker, and that guy is number 51, Andrew Biney. He pulls out, gets in front really well. Rice will just follow his very good block here at Kiz. Biney just takes care of the edge. Three yards needed. And a new set of downs. Six yards gained. Approaching four minutes to play. Schwarzenberger has a receiver to each side of the field. He'll keep it himself, turns it up, good decision, finds a seam, and will take it to the 35-yard line. That is 11 and a half yards for Schwarzenberger. What a dual threat this young man has been today. And I'm going to bring up the name of Andrew Biney once again. He was able to push the edge off and allow Schwarzenberger to cut up in front of that. Here it comes again, number 51. Well, I did, you didn't see, I think it was Larson who was actually on the ground, so he took a man to the ground, and another first down. Biney, 6'1", 230 for the left guard. From the Bearcats, 35. Rice following, who else? Look at Biney get downfield and block his way allowing Rice to get 10 more yards. Ooh, 
That's three plays in a row. A guy who didn't touch the ball allowed the ball to move. You got a lot of MVP candidates out here today, a lot of player of the game candidates. Most of them have put gaudy offensive numbers on the board, but number 51 has been a big reason why. Boy, yep. Great job by Biney to lead, lead it through, and now you're second down and one. We're under three minutes to play. A two-point lead for Napoleon Gackle Streeter, but they're on the move at the North Star 26-yard line and second and a yard. And a flag comes in before we've snapped the football. Someone must have lined up offside. Thinking that's got to be it. For, yeah, it'll, it'll be just judging on the reaction yep. from the Bearcats, it'll be a first down. Ethan Sager reacted. That kind of tips your hand on which way this call is going to go. That will give the Imperials a first down at the 21-yard line. And with all the super passing that's been done in this game, it is now rushing that is determining yep. it. Napoleon, 316 rushing yards for Napoleon Gackle Streeter. This possession started with, what, about six minutes yep. left in the game, LT. And they've milked it down now to two and a half minutes to play. Now Schwarzenberger milking that clock as, as much as he can. He'll take the snap with 2.23 to play. He'll get inside. He jukes a man, still on his feet, and he'll get to the 15-yard line before Schill makes the tackle. A six-yard pickup for Schwarzenberger. His run fakes have been pretty oh, solid today, which means, his, solid. which means his reads. You know, he knows that Rice is going to come in front of him, and he's not looking at that running back at all. He's trying to make his read. The outside closes down. He makes the read at the end, or the outside backer closes in, and it's open for him to the outside. North Star has to take a timeout on defense here to stop the clock with 2.08 remaining, so they will have just one, one timeout remaining. As you take a look at some of the faithful from Napoleon Gackle Streeter. They love their football. They love their wrestling in that part of the country. So the Bearcats have their backs against the wall, trailing 44-42, and Napoleon Gackle Streeter threatening here at the 15. I mean, it's even hard for the Bearcats to just to get enough energy to jog back after the timeout. You know, there's yeah, they got to be gassed. There's very, very, very tired young men out there. LT and I will have our local Chevy dealer player of the game after this. Second and five from the 15. Rice will carry and he'll go real low and take his way to the 13 yard line. Seemed like Haugen rolled a little bit at the end of that one trying to make the tackle. We'll see it again in the Farmers Union Insurance replay. And North Star has used its yep. final timeout to stop the clock with 2.02 to play. Actually, it was Rice. He was being tackled, and his momentum was going down to the turf, and, and it looked like the hit came right below the, below the knee on Haugen. Napoleon Gackle Streeter has lost to the eventual state champion in each of the past several years. And they're trying to secure their second state championship. They won back in as, uh, as Napoleon Gackle Streeter. As Napoleon yeah. Gackle Streeter, yeah. yes. Back in the 70s, yeah. Napoleon won right. in the mid-70s once. Next up, the Class A state championship game. Once beaten Linton HMB against undefeated Stanley Powers Lake. That'll be act two of this four-act Friday football festival, the Dakota Bowl. Third down and two for the Imperials from the 13 and North Star. Low snap. Schwarzenberger brings it in and brings Napoleon Gackle Streeter a step closer to a state championship with a first down carry inside the nine-yard line. Well, the fake goes to Jared Rice. He had a pretty good lead block. Check out 36 right here off the nice catch on the low snap. 
takes away the outside and the push inside. Schumacher getting a pretty good push there. I think that was on Blake. He was uh, he was blocking, and that is a huge, huge first down. Clock on the move now. No timeouts left. If you want to think ahead and assume that Napoleon Gackel Streeter would score, then the two-point conversion becomes really, really critical because you'd be looking at either a 50-42 lead or a 52-42 lead, and we will talk about a two-point conversion because Schwarzenberger takes it in for the 10-yard touchdown run with a minute 28 left in the game. A huge day for the quarterback, Jonah Schwarzenberger. You know, Grandy just... You know, he was blocked, obviously, right there. But the North Star kids look like they're almost too tired to make a tackle. Boy, they, and look look at them as they go off. You can tell they just, their, their tanks, if not empty, that, that, that meter is getting awfully close to empty. Let's go, Blue! Now, sensing the importance of this two-point conversion, Napoleon Gackle Streeter has taken a time out here. And they're going to talk about what they want to do with this two-point conversion that would make it a two possession lead, a 10 point lead. Yeah, it's, it's, it's huge, it, it's huge. It's, it really, it's, uh, it's the play that either gives the Bearcats hope or not. You, you know, know you, you and I have called through our years doing high school tournaments, we have called a number of basketball games that have been lower scoring than this football game. Quite a few, in fact. A critical two point conversion attempt here for the Imperials, they lead by eight. They're looking for the 10 point lead, which would be seemingly insurmountable with a minute and 28 left. Schwarzenberger fires to the end zone. Was it caught? No, it's incomplete. It falls just short of Trent Fettig and at the feet of Fettig. So there is hope for North Star to extend this game. They don't have any timeouts left. A minute 28 to play and they trail by eight. And they have some big play weapons on their side. Their, their quarterback obviously has had a lot of big plays this year down the field to Grandy. You know, Colton <laughs> Braun is a kid who can, you know, if given an opportunity in the open field, can really get going. 1,129 combined yards this afternoon. That's right, 1,129. The Dome has never seen quite an offensive display in the history like of the Dakota this. Bowl like it's seeing today. And where the, the uh, Bearcats begin their offensive possession will be it's huge. Will be important. I mean, Brooks Sinker has has not had many deep kickoffs today. Sinker this time will angle it toward Schill, who caught it at the 20-yard line. Schill angling to his left, trying to break outside. He gets to the 35, and no more there. Tracked down from behind by Dylan Bitts. But the Bitts junior in special teams coverage. Real nice job of not giving up the outside. He did not allow his outside shoulder. Look at the passing yards there from Hagler, and he will be, he will be slinging it right now. North Star has to go 64 yards in the final 81 seconds if they are to try to extend this state championship game. I formation. This may be the end around. Pass. And it's back to Hagler. They'll throw it down the field, but it is incomplete. And that play was blown up by at least Hagler didn't have the opportunity to get a good look at his receiver because Andrew Biney was there for Napoleon Gackle Streeter. That play also designed to take your defensive backs, or in this case, your safeties, bring them up. and bring them up. It didn't happen. Nope. Schwarzenberger stayed deep. Fettig also stayed deep. So they, so even though there was a little bit of space to try to yeah. get the ball out here, there were players deeper. Yeah, good discipline play, you know, by Napoleon Gackle Streeter, including Trent Fettig. Now they throw it deep. Weiss is the closest man to the football. And it falls incomplete. Ethan Sager was the intended receiver. Yeah, Sager was split to this uh, near side in a one and one kind of coverage situation there. A little soft coverage from Rice, but the old rule of thumb is no one 
gets behind oh, you, and that's what Rice him. was not allowing Sager to get behind him. Well, on third down and 10 here, North Star's got to think about being able to retain the football, which is first thing, you got to get a first down from their own 36 with 69 seconds left in this state championship game. Two receivers to the near side of the field. They're going to throw back the other way, but that was well over the top of the head of Josh Haugen, the intended receiver, and it's fourth down. So North Star's season has come down to one play. Check out Rice. He was there anyway, Ham. Even if this catch is made, Jared Rice is right there lined up ready to make a tackle. He had he had real good position, and the pass was don't you think very L high. Don't you think LT and North Star just looks completely they look tired. drained? Yep. You look at Grandy now, even look at coming out to his route. I mean, the guy it looks like his legs are just full of concrete. I mean, they're just completely drained. They fumble the snap. Hagler will lob it to the far sideline, and it's caught at the 41-yard line. Colton Braun gives North Star another few plays to live here with 58 seconds left, a broken play. Boy, first you need to pick it up and then go downfield. Braun is able to get behind Rice. Schwarzenberger <laughs> coming over to try to help out. And they've, they've looked deep now to Sager, and they look deep to Braun. It yeah. might be back to what you're talking about with Grandy. Just might not be able to chug those legs downfield. Schill and Grandy, as you see right there, the two receivers on the near side of the formation. First and 10 for the Bearcats from the 41 of the Imperials. They're going to throw this to Schill, and it's over the head of Schill, who had some separation from the defender Steven Weigel inside the 20 yard line. I tell you the Imperials are playing defense in slow motion now too. Everybody has slowed down. Chill trying to make an adjustment to this ball. You know, if it Weigel's back there and he's like, oh, uh, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> over everybody's head, good. The legs just don't want to yep. pick up and get down as quickly as they did in the first half. 54 seconds remaining. We're in a one possession game here at eight point. Napoleon Gackle Streeter lead in a wild, wild scoring affair here in the nine man state championship game. Hagler up top, and that ball is Intercepted. picked off. And it's Schwarzenberger who comes up with the interception, and the man who has made big play after big play offensively today may have just preserved a state championship with a defensive play. Boy, Schwarzenberger playing the rule, be the deepest guy. They're trying to get it uh, to Brock Larson deep down the field, overshoots Larson just a hair, and Schwarzenberger gets both hands on that ball, and how sweet you think that leather feels right about there. And Schwarzenberger will now just take the knee. One more snap. One more snap. The two teams already, you know, beginning to shake hands with each other. These are these are some worn out warriors here today, wearing the blue and the white and the black. The gas tanks, uh, the light is on. The warning <laughs> light is on in the gas tanks of these guys. They uh, have run miles upon miles on the turf today. Uh, North, North Star's calling the tow truck. They've run out of gas. Yeah. Napoleon Gackle Streeter is going to be your 2011 nine-man state champion. 50 to 42. A historical shootout in the nine man championship game. The players are so tired they can't even move away from the line of scrimmage right now. Well, the second state championship for Napoleon Gackle Streeter. North Star was playing in its first ever football state championship game. You could tell early on this one was uh, was going to be, and it ended up being quite the shootout. Now I want to see the game that's going to break 92 points because <laughs> this record's out there. That's 22 points more than anything else that's ever happened in the Dakota Bowl. I don't see that happening in the rest of our matchups today. Not anyway. today. No. Nope. Not today. Well, there were 671 passing yards <laughs> between these two teams. Well over 1,000 total yards. 
and uh, I know we'll have time to talk about it in the next next game. Neither team's going to pass much at no. all. 1,150 combined yards, and here's Jacob Kauker. All right, we've got Jonah Schwarzenberger with us. Jonah, the last couple of years, you guys made it to the point where you're losing to the eventual state champion. Now, senior year, you go out on top. I mean, this is indescribable. I give it all to those guys. We worked hard three years in a row, got stopped here. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. And in a record-breaking kind of way, it seems like both offenses, tons of yards, most yards ever in a Dakota Bowl, most points ever in a Dakota Bowl. What allowed you guys to click offensively so well today? Um, our defense, I mean, we, we were planning on holding this to an 8-0 game. I mean, 50-42. I don't know. I mean, our offense was clicking. We knew it would. You know, there's no uh, circumstances, win, you know, whatever. But, I mean, we're both. This, I give it to them, too. I mean, they're a great team. So are we. I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, this is a feeling. Yeah, you talk about North Star's performance. They fought to the very end. You had that crucial interception right there at the end. On that last drive, what's going through your mind? Just stop them. I mean, uh, after they, we held them to fourth down, got them to fourth down there, and we they completed a pass, and it's like, okay, this has happened the whole game. Now we just need to turn over. I mean, they didn't turn it over at all, but we finally got one at the end there. All right, well, Jonah Schwarzenberger and Napoleon Gackle-Streeter, state champions for 2011 in nine man. Guys, thank you very much, Jacob. Uh, boy, the numbers that Mr. Schwarzenberger put up today are, are just incredible. 301 yards passing for the Napoleon Gackle-Streeter quarterback. He rushed for 242 yards. We will uh, bring you the presentation of individual and team trophies here as the two teams have stayed on the field at the Fargo Dome and in the background uh, on either end of the field you see the combatants of the Class A championship game who have taken the field Linton HMB and Stanley Powers Lake. Both quarterbacks by the way broke the record for most passing yards. Both of them did. Both of them did. <laughs> uh, Tim Horn had 281 back in 2000 for North and we saw the 300 plus for Schwarzenberger and, and uh, well, almost 370 as a team with obviously Hagler doing that uh, for North Star. Let's take you now field side for the presentation of the awards and trophies here at following the nine man state championship game. Raquel Ockrey. Alexis Keeker. Gabby Miller. Cassie Axman. Emma Tindall, Cassidy Wilson, and Emily Gibbons. Their advisor is Jessica Knutson. The managers for the Bearcats, Aaron Armentrout and Aaron Bergdahl. Their statisticians, Morgan Peters, Megan Gowan and Laura Oakland. The players for the Bearcats, Drew Schill, Daniel Grandy, Riley Thomas, Jacob Hagler, Josie Axman, Alex Weston, Cody Vogt, Ethan Sager, Colton Braun, Kim Tams, Jaron Dahl, Nolan Reeder, Sean Murchie, Richie Thomas, Stephen Hunt, Travis Blake, Matthew Hunt, Josh Haugen, Brooks Larson, Hayden Larson, and Ryan Solsack. The Bearcats assistant coaches, Mitch Ellsberger, Corey Hagler, and Trevor Tompkins. And head coach, Brian Haugen. And now the championship individual awards for Napoleon Gackle Streeter Imperials.
Statisticians, Rachel Weigel, Brianna Moser, and Tiffany Guas. The Imperials players, Steven Weigel, Hunter Larson, Dylan Bitts, Nicholas Caldwell, Jonah Schwarzenberger, Matthew Gross, Justin Holberg, Trent Fettig, Matthew Feist, Nicholas Breidenbach, Trenton Jangula, Sam Emsminger, Ryan Baumgartner, Dylan Bitts, Jared Reese, Brett Schumacher, Wade Rath Wald, Andrew Biney, John Widmer, Corey Koenig, Drew Bakken, Anthony Westmiller, Brooks Zenker, Jared Schumacher, Dalton Biney, Benjamin Bowman, Zachary Meyer, and Nicholas Becker. Assistant coaches for the Imperials, Barry McCleary and Mike Sandness. And the Imperials head coach, Kelly McCleary. The North Dakota High School Coaches Association Awards will now be presented. Today's presenters, Delane Orvick from Fargo and Pete Moe from Washburn. Now introduction of the nine-man outstanding senior athlete nominees. First from Region 1, Jonah Schwarzenberger from Napoleon. Region 2 from North Border, Garrett Frazier. From Region 3, from North Star, Hayden Larson. And also recognizing Derek Young from Benson County. And from Region 4, Jake Hardy from Beach. And the 2011 Nine Men Football North Dakota High School Coaches Association and Powerade Senior Athlete of the Year. From Napoleon, Jonah Schwarzenberger. Our next award is the Nine Man Coach of the Year. This year's 2011 Nine Man Coach of the Year from Region 3, Brian Haugen. And now for our team trophy presentation. Will the representatives from North Star step forward to receive their runner-up team trophy? And now, will representatives from the Napoleon Gackle Streeter Imperial step forward to receive your championship trophy?
Well, congratulations to both football teams for one very entertaining morning of football here in the nine-man championship game. And a special congratulations to the Imperials of Gackle Streeter in their 2011 state championship. Yeah, 50 to 42 win. What an offensive juggernaut. Certainly, uh, you know, these teams went up and down so much that, uh, that in the end, both teams were just totally tired. But the run game, with all the passing, the run game ultimately makes the difference. Yes, it was. It was Napoleon Gackle Streeter who, you know, had the football with about six and a half minutes left starting in their own territory and were able to, you know, milk the clock down. And uh, by the time North Star got it, there was only about 90 seconds left in the game. And Napoleon Gackle Streeter preserves it with the late interception by Jonah Schwarzenberger. Coming up next, we will name our local Chevy dealer player of the game. That's a bit later in the post-game show, but we'll continue with more coverage from the 2011 Dakota Bowl next year on North Dakota NBC Sports. Welcome back to the Fargo Dome. Well, along with Lee Timmerman, I'm Dan Hammer as Napoleon Gackle Streeter has defeated North Star 50-42 for the nine-man championship. Our player of the game Brought to you by your local Chevy dealers and the local Chevy dealers player of the game is undoubtedly Napoleon Gackle Streeter's Jonah Schwarzenberger. Not a lot of suspense here, LT. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Schwarzenberger uh, was Local Chevy dealers player of the game is undoubtedly Napoleon Gackle Streeter's Jonah Schwarzenberger. No suspense here, Elton. Well, he was 21 of 30 for 301 yards passing, and he had a couple of passing touchdowns. He also rushed the ball 26 times for 242 yards rushing, so it was 543 yards total offense for Schwarzenberger. That obviously breaks uh, all kinds of records. There's so many records be, to be broken. His passing yards broke the record. Then Hagler had more. The catch down, you know, the catches by Grandy, that's a, a new uh, reception record. All kinds of record, 92 points. But the main thing, Schwarzenberger led his team to the nine-man championship. Well, congratulations to Jonah Schwarzenberger, your local Chevy dealers player of the game. The opening act here at the 2011 Dakota Bowl was a doozy, and we've got a full day of football yet ahead. In about uh, 25 minutes from now, the Class A championship, Linton HMB against Stanley Powers Lake. And our continuing coverage from the Dakota Bowl at the Fargo Dome is next here on NBC North Dakota Sports.